Welcome in to game 42. Game 42 of the Banana Ball 2023 World Tour. Loved by our good friends at Zappos. I repeat, game 42. Everything you saw last night, it was just a mere figment of your imagination. No tarp slides, no cereal drafts, no special guests, no wheat bix. This is game 42. Game 42. Like Josh said, this is game 42 of the 2023 Banana Ball World Tour, loved by our good buddies over at Zappos. And although you may have thought you watched game 42 last night, uh, that did not happen in the slightest. That should be wiped from your memory. And uh, what is happening tonight is the first time we have ever played game 42. Well, to, to be honest with you, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit here. I, you, I don't want anybody to really get confused. Uh, we did play three innings of Banana Ball last night against the Aussie Drop Bears, the first ever international banana ball game. And unfortunately, in the 72nd banana ball game of all time, it's the first event ever that was rained out. And uh, we did eat some wheat bix and, and we did draft some cereals and things about Australia. Uh, I, would, I would love if that hypnotism actually worked. And in the chat, please let us know if you were actually fooled. Let's uh, take a look at the tarp slide that Josh Tulevsky said did not actually happen. Here we go. Okay, so the game is canceled. This is hour four of entertainment for the folks in Historic Racing Stadium. Hour three, uh, maybe two and a half, I guess, of everybody on the broadcast. And yeah, that's me, Biko, Josh, Chad, our coordinating producer, of course, Cowboy Kyle. We've got Bella and Emerson some of our amazing crew in there as well. Big old slide, slipping and goofing around. And, oh, cannonball! Yeah, man, I had to get up and just go for it. I needed another splashdown. Oh, and I went down. That was <laughs> just dead fish there. I didn't... I, you know, I always underestimate how darn slippery these tarps actually are. Yeah, man, and you got to watch out for where the bases and the pitcher's mound are. Wow, look at me in slow-mo. I like what I've got going on there. And here I am just goofing around, and the legs go right out from under me. That's just about the end of that. Josh fired up about his slide tackle of Kyle, and now we're going for distance here. And what happened, Josh? Oh, no, well, no. I know it wasn't very graceful, but I, I think you're going to see. I I'm telling you guys, there was no water on that tarp, and I can't scrape up myself, you know? Yeah. Well, I appreciate you taking care of your body. Now we're just kicking water all over the place and, and zooming out back up into the broadcast booth. In case you're wondering, Biko Scala, Josh Tulevsky, so happy to have you here for round two of game 42 on the 2023 World Tour loved by our good pals over at Zappos. It is game 1.333 for the Drop Bears who have played three innings of banana ball and it was a mighty great three innings at that. It was a magnificent three innings for the Aussies. I mean, we saw them start to employ the sprint defense very effectively. A walk to start the game and what happens? DR Meadows is nailed at second base on their first ever try. We saw the Drop Bears score or two runs in the top of the third off of Christian Dearman, taking advantage of some sprints in that inning. We're really starting to see these guys already nail the basics of banana ball. Again, the only thing that's missing, a couple of trick plays from those guys. That's a fact. They will have nine innings to do that tonight. And let's take a look at the drop bears for anybody who was not around last night and have no idea what this team from the land down under is all about. It is a team formed by Ozball, which is... Uh, a baseball organization that's barely been around for a year and a half, but they are making waves in Oz. And it's made up of collegiate and professional players. Majority of the guys on the Drop Bears have played professionally in Australia, most of them at the top level in the ABL. And they have two former MLB men, Chris Oxpring, who started last night and is also their head coach, and then Rich Thompson, who had a pretty lengthy career, actually, in the MLB, mostly for the Los Angeles Angels, and could be hot tonight or tomorrow night. So it it is going to be really fun to see how the drop bears could pull it off. And let's take a look at, oh, we're up, up into the broadcast booth. Uh, Chad, what starting pitcher would you like us to look at, buddy? 
Oh, okay. Yeah, now let's take a look at Tyrell Harris, starting pitcher tonight for the Drop Bears. Uh, I heard about a former major leaguer. He was not a former major leaguer, but he was drafted by the Atlanta Braves in the 19th round. And instead of getting a gander at the graphic, you get a look at a beautiful, sold-out, historic race and stadium. So you'll get what you get, and you don't get upset. But long story short, this is a man who has pitched three different season in the Australian Baseball League. Bada-bing, bada-boom. Better late than never. And as I mentioned, drafted in the 19th round back in 2009. And really good stats in the ABL and throughout 69 innings pitched. Yeah, nice 69 innings pitched. And he gets the start on 6-9, no less. How about this? A 2.86 ERA. That's phenomenal over there in the Australian Baseball League. And by the way, this guy familiar with Jake Skull and Reese Hampton, two of our guys who have also played over in Australia. He has also played in the United States with Sam Claycamp, a three-year World Tour man currently on the Party Animals, one of their player coaches. And he actually threw to his catcher tonight seven years ago in indie ball in the U.S., Zane Chavez. So there are connections all over the place. Tyrell Harris, a man who has played all over the world. And I could have talked to him for probably seven days straight earlier today when I was getting his life story. He is a really interesting cat, and it's going to be a blast to see what he can do out on the mound tonight. So the scene is set. The Bananas were ahead two points to nothing after three innings last night. That game is null and void, and we are resuming the first ever game between the Savannah Bananas and the Aussie Drop Bears. Round two, let's see if we can get nine innings, huh, Josh? It's going to be exciting. I think we're going to do it tonight. I love it. Okay, let's throw it down to the field for some Banana Baby. We'll be back in the booth in a little bit to really break this thing down. Before we go down to the field, for everybody who was upset that we didn't get to the seven inning and get to give away hokas last night we will give away two pairs of hokas count them two two hokas yes mr dennis reynolds two hokas will be given away tonight so stick around for the seventh inning when you have that opportunity to get in fill all your information out the buzzword will be given so you can't have a chance to get the hokas before the seventh inning uh you will find out what the magic word is you'll fill out a little document and then you will be entered in the running for a chance at two hokas okay it's the tail end of the banana baby but the entertainment rolls on let's throw it down to the field And the DH Luke Libyan on the mound for the Drop Bears, Tyrell Harris. The Aussie Drop Bears are managed by Chris Oxprey. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm bringing some big bananas, potassium power to the plate. His name is Charlie. He is four years old and attempting to hit a home run against these drop bears. So make some noise for my friend, Charlie. Here we go. Wind up and the pitch, ball! The ball's hit! Go to first, Charlie! Timing play! Here comes the throw to first! Not in time! Charlie's on his way to second! The Drop Bears are having trouble with the sun. He's on his way to second base, ladies and gentlemen. Bumbling, tumbling, stumbling. That ball's getting kicked around the infield. Ladies and gentlemen, get on your feet, because he is rounding third base. He's on his way to the plate. The catcher can't handle it. Can he do it? Yes, he can. Ladies and gentlemen. 
the name of the game is Banana Ball, and in Banana Ball, we have nine rules. Rule number one, every inning counts. You win the inning, you get a point. How do you win the inning? Score more runs than the other team. The final inning counts the most, where every run counts for a point. Rule number two, we have nine innings or a two-hour time limit. Unless, rule number three, if we are tied, it will force a one-on-one -on -one showdown tiebreaker. One hitter versus one pitcher with one fielder. Rule number four, there is no bunting because bunting sucks. If you bunt, you're thrown out of the game. Swing the bat. Rule number five, batters can steal first base. Rule number six, there are no walks in banana ball. Ball four is a sprint. The runner can go as far as they want till all nine fielders touch the ball. Rule number seven, batters may not step outside of the batter's box. If they do, he'll call it a strike. Rule number eight, there are no mound visits. And rule number nine, the most fans first rule of them all. Savannah, I hope you brought your gloves tonight, everybody, because if any of you fans catch a foul ball in this game, it counts for an out. And introducing the newest rule of banana ball, the banana ball challenge rule. Each team will be permitted to challenge one ruling on the field per game. They may challenge a fair or foul ball call, a force or tag play at a base or home plate, or a catch play in the outfield or infield. Each team will get one per game. Challenges will be reviewed by our broadcast team and relayed to our umpiring staff. If the challenge is successful, they retain that challenge. Now both teams get a challenge, but for the first time ever in all of professional sports, you, the fans, get to challenge one play on the field. And earlier in the show, we crowned your representative, your fan representative who will blow that confetti and argue with these umpires. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Melanie Ortag. She's ready to get to work, and we are ready for the traditional banana ball weigh-in. Introducing first, making his way out of the Aussie drop bears dugout. Hailing all the way from Australia, he is the thunder from down under. Please welcome Riley Light. He clocks in this evening at 230 pounds. And opposing him, stepping out of the Savannah Bananas dugout. He is the heartthrob of Banana Land, getting oiled up and ready to go for this weigh-in. Women want him, men want to be him. He receives more legitimate marriage proposals in a week than most of us will collectively receive in our lifetimes. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Noah Bridges! Noah steps onto the scale. He comes in tonight at 195 pounds of pure potassium power! And now home plate umpire Vincent Chapman. Three, two, one, go! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, direct your attention down the right field line. It's time to meet the cast of your 2023 Banana Ball World! Well, as the cast and crew parades down the right field line, Biko Scala and Josh Tulevsky hopping back on the mic. Masterful job down there on the weigh-in. And as we get our second shot at the ninth Challenger game on the tour, Josh, how have the Bananas been faring in these? I mean, the Bananas 5-3 and three this season in Challenger games. We've seen some really good performances against the MLB PAA. 
the Charleston Dirty Birds, also the Kansas City Monarchs. The Monarchs, the only Challenger Series the Bananas did not win, but overall really great numbers. The Bananas, the Bananas with 33 points earned this season, Challenger opponents have scored 18 points against them. That's a plus 15 point differential for the Bananas, which is a very strong showing in, in my book. Yeah, they're always very excited to get a break from the party animals who are still three games better than the Nanners on the tour in that matchup, 17 and 14 for the bad boys in Banana Land. And some of the big bashers for the Nanners have really thrived against challengers. Eric Jones and Jackson Olsen have really led the charge. Jones with four home runs against challenger opponents this season. And how about this from Jackson Olsen? Seven walk-offs against challengers. That is three more than second place on the Bananas in challenger games. It's unbelievable what they're doing. We're seeing great numbers from a lot of these guys. Oh, 100%. And we talked about Tyrell Harris on the mound for the Drop Bears. Jared Donaldson, the splitter specialist, throwing for the Nanners. Yeah, and Jared Donaldson's going to get his second start against a challenger opponent. He got to start in Kansas City, game one against the Monarchs, but was touched up quite a bit, allowed nine hits to them. They batted 360 against Donnie that night. But overall, when he pitched against the Dirty Birds in relief, had an effective outing, did not allow a hit. So Donnie, you know, it's going to be uh, getting a chance to see what he can really bring against these drop bears. And I have a feeling our splitter specialist, he's going to bring some good things out there as he's just gotten stronger as this tour has gone by. Yeah, that is a fact, especially since April 1st. Jared Donaldson has really stepped it up another level, a D2 All-American a year ago at Georgia Southwestern. And he is a guy who in his last outing in Nashville had a pretty bizarre one against the party animals. Only gave up two runs in five innings, but gave up 13 hits, one sprint, only got one strikeout, stranded nine men on base two in each of the first four innings one in the fifth he escaped and he got the bananas a win it was an effective game overall for jared donaldson you can't say that it wasn't when you only allow two runs he got some key double plays two to be uh, exact for from the bananas and yeah donnie that was his season high in hits allowed but still two earned runs you're gonna take that he got the win earned two points only lost one nanners won four to three and swept the good state of tennessee okay let's throw it down to jesse cole on the field as he shouts out the entire cast and crew just a mere moments away from game time <laughs> are ready the cast is ready it's time for you to get ready so we need everyone here in banana land on your feet everyone here on your feet charlie. because we have charlie six years old here to get you guys ready charlie are you ready for this yes so whatever charlie does you guys are going to do charlie let's bring it here we go oh yes charlie keep it going Oh, you're making it loud here, Charlie. Oh, all right, we're raising a little bit. We will raise it tonight. Keep it going, Charlie. Ooh, a little staying alive, kind of. I kind of like this, yes. Keep, all right, a little sassy. Here we go. 
I like this. Oh, wait, jumping jacks. Okay. We're in. We're going hard. Here we go. Oh, we're spinning. We're spinning. We're still spinning. Okay, we're back. Oh, yes. Fans, let's hear it for Charlie. Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, and potassium enthusiasts from around the world, tonight, you and thousands of your friends here live, thousands more watching at home on YouTube, have gathered here to witness something beyond your wildest imagination. From Montana to Savannah, from the Isle of Man to Tokyo, Japan, the Banana Maniacs come from across the globe to witness this. This is not baseball. This is the crucible where the fastest, hungriest, and most entertaining players are forged. This is a game of the fans, by the fans, and for the fans. But this is not your granddad's pastime. This is not just another night at the ballpark. This game is baseball by birth, fruit by name, and an absolute worldwide phenomenon by the grace of God. This is the time for all 4,000 people here in Savannah to get on your feet and give me your voices. Because this is the greatest show in sports. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Banana Ball. Ladies and gentlemen, let's meet the starting lineup for your Savannah Bananas. In center field, number five, T.R., the Doc Meadows. At first base, number three, Eric Jones. The left fielder, number seven, Michael Vitamin D. The extra hitter, number 19, Dan Obers. The D.H., number 24, Dakota D. Mac McFadden. At third base, our greatest showman, number eight, Jackson Olsen. At shortstop, our glove magician, number six, Ryan Cox. Catcher, number one, Bill LaRoy. In right field, number 18, Danny Hosley. And at second base, number 13, Dalton M -m 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 Malton. On the mound for your bananas, number 21, Jared Donaldson. Your Savannah bananas are managed by Tyler Gillum and Adam Byron. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Australian colors tonight, please welcome Alfie Thompson. Here to perform the Australian National Anthem, please welcome the Bananas Pep Band. <laughs>
for the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> the trip from the great southern land taking on the savannah bananas for the second time in as many nights and tonight we'll try and get more than three innings in weather permitted bananas had a two nothing lead in points through three innings an evening ago when mother nature rained out the first banana ball game of all time. It was the 72nd banana ball game in the books. First one where precipitation ended us before two hours or nine innings were completed. Take a look at how the bananas line up defensively from left to right. Michael Deeb, D.R. Meadows, and Danny Hosley in the infield. Third to first, Jackson Olsen, Ryan Cox, Dalton Malden, and Eric Jones Jr. Bill LaRoy is behind the dish, and Jared Donaldson is on the mound. And we've seen Jared Donaldson and Bill LaRoy working great together since Bill's been catching full time for the bananas. There was a little bit of a tandem between he and EJ, but we've seen EJ holding down first base very well. And by the way, almost an identical defensive alignment as last Last night, but we've got a little swap out of one main for another. Noah Bridges not in tonight's game. It's Dalton Malden at second and Hosley in right. That is Danny Hosley, the Shohei Otani of Banana Land. Been playing a lot of second and a lot of right field. You can move them all over the outfield and infield. Some folks in the Bananas organization even say he's the best catcher around. That's just how valuable he is. Of course, the Bananas closer as well. And one other difference between last night and tonight, instead of Christian Dearman, it is Jared Donaldson on the bump. 2022 Coastal Plain League champion, ace of the squad. That won their second straight Pettit Cup. And Donnie, the senior, or just graduated rather from Georgia Southwestern last spring as a D2 All-American, second best pitcher in the country, thanks to 121 Ks and just under 100 innings pitched. See what he's done on the tour thus far, the 6.64 ERA, just a smidge worse than the Bananas team average. Banana ball is a hitter sport, but he's been great as of late. I mean, he's got three wins in his last four starts for the Bananas. And again, his last start, five innings pitched, 13 hits allowed. And that became a six point, a six minute and 16 second average minutes per inning for Jared Donaldson, the second highest mark of the tour for him. In fact, his lowest mark that night, five minutes and 21 seconds in the first inning. I think he'll be able to cut down on that, lower the average MPI on the season tonight. That's a fact. He's just one second under five minutes per inning thrown, and the drop bears against him. Let's throw it down to Jesse real quick. Three, I need everyone here to yell, start the clock. One, two, three. Showtime. Uh, the team from the other side of the equator, we show them upside down, little tongue in cheek from the BTV control room. As you saw briefly, Max Brennan, Josh Lavender, Blake Cavill, the first three to swing it. Paul Winland waiting in the cleanup spot in left field. Max Brennan led off last night's ball game with a double. He does one down the left field line here tonight. We'll see if he's digging for two. He is. Throw from Michael Deeb, not in time. And it's deja vu. How about that for, Ma for Max Brennan? 
And the Drop Bears, the entire team is gonna join him for a celebration. Looks like he got to share a drink out of some sort of footwear. Well, the one for two performance a night ago doesn't count. If we can complete this ball game or at least get five innings or an hour played, this double will. Now Josh Lavender cuts and misses out a splitter. And Max Brennan showing early on one of the better hitters here for the Aussie Drop Bears. Pulled the ball into left field in his first at bat yesterday. He's going to do the same thing tonight. And man, just a good piece of hitting for Brennan. Six-year veteran of the Australian Baseball League, all with the Sydney Blue Sox. Lavender, a two-year party animal. Played with the Cronulla Sharks in 2020. That's his connection to the Antipodes. And he's the reason why this whole magical event is occurring. He was the connection between Matt Cavill and Jesse Cole. That went off Donnie's glove. He doesn't have a chance for Lavender as he flips it over to first. And trouble early on, he was looking over at Brennan who got to third base. Now runners on the corners with nobody gone. Yeah, Donnie thought that he had come down with that baseball and instinctively tried to throw it over to third only to realize it was behind him. I think Dalton Malden or Eric Jones probably informed him that the ball not in his glove and unfortunately not able to get Josh Lavender over there at first base. In E1 in your book, Josh? Yes, of course. Now, Debatably the most dangerous man in the Drop Bears lineup. Blake Cavill. Cutting a miss, there's that patented splitter. Getting an 0-2 count on the Drop Bears second baseman. He was 0 for 1. Got a ball four sprint, drove in a run on it. In the three inning game last night. And it is a three pitch strikeout. The splitter devastating there against the big left-hander. And that's the pitch that Donnie relies on, especially in tricky situations. And Donnie, of course, going with that splitter and doing a little dance out there. Oh my gosh, it's the Soldier Boy! Didn't know we would see that one in Banana Land tonight. The entire team getting in on the action. How about that? Back-to-back -back nights, the Soldier Boy prominent on the BTV broadcast. Yeah, that's right, for anyone who missed it. <laughs> Seven-year-old me did not know how to crank that Soldier Boy, and the kids at school were ruthless. Traumatic memory, huh, Josh? Of course, yeah. Now to Paul Winland in the cleanup spot. Heaters outside, good two-seam movement. Winland, the left fielder. Only one trip to the dish an evening ago. He grounded out to third. Lavender breaking towards second, but it was too good of a jump. He actually slammed the brakes, thinking that Donnie may throw over. Winland started his collegiate career at the University of Missouri. Then transferred over to Florida Southwestern State before ending up at Northwest Florida State College, where his teammates with the batter you just saw, Blake Cavill. And that is how a Beaufort, South Carolina native ends up playing for the Aussie Drop Bears. One of the very few players on this team who has not played professionally in Australia or grown up there. And he gets the sprint on five pitches. Brennan scores easily from third. Lavender going first to third. Winland slams the brakes. Same exact scenario, except the Drop Bears draw first blood. It's one to nothing here in the first inning. And we've seen a lot of patience from the Drop Bear hitters. So far, it's paying off. They got a couple runs on some sprints last night. They're going to get it here in the first inning as well. And Riley Light draped in the Australian flag, coming up with a didgeridoo, Vincent Chapman says, yeah, you can swing with that. And the heater, it's the low outside corner. Generous call by Vincent Chapman there. And now he's gonna say that Light stepped out of the box. So it's a quick 0-2 count. I don't think that's in the spirit of the rule, but he did step out of the box and he just barely misses the third base bag there. Still an 0-2 count. 
In his lone at bat last night, popped out to Bill Leroy behind the dish. And what was a trick play, of course, erased with the rain. And one of the more exciting plays we saw all night, Bill with a little bit of a bobble and here a back pick. And that one not in time, the runner back in safely at first base. Yeah, Winlin was breaking on the pitch, huge secondary lead. Good throw, close play, Winlin clearly safe. One, two now to light. Count even at two balls and two strikes. Riley out of Roeville, Victoria. That one chopped to Ryan Cox. Between the legs to second for one. Malden over to first. Not in time. Another run scores for the Drop Bears. It's the 66th trick play for the tour leader in them. Ryan Cox, the fans itching for a challenge here. I think it would be a fruitless move. Yeah, I do believe the runner was safe. That's almost a situation where it's a great trick play from Ryan Cox, but possibly if he had just gone for the standard double play, could have been turned and gotten the bananas out of the inning there. He's bang bang over at first. Riley Light beats the wrap. And a big swing and a foul ball from the catcher, Zane Chavez. One for one with a single last night. Got the half night off before suiting up behind the dish here. Almost steps out of the box. Would have struck out if he had. And then takes the splitter down. Chopped to first, backhanded by EJ. He will step on the bag, and that does it. But two runs for the Aussie Drop Bears. The Nanners will need to score two to tie the first inning, three to win it. As their foes from the land down under strike early and often here. You get a look at the strikeout there from Jared Donaldson. All smiles from Blake Cavill coming back to the dugout and in the Soldier Boy celebration. And here comes Tyrell Harris. Guy who has played baseball all over the world. Originally from Compton, California. When he was three years old, he moved up to Fairfield. Attended the University of the Pacific, then Sacramento City Junior College, a little Juco action. Finished up with two years at Tennessee. After which he was drafted by the Atlanta Braves in the 19th round back in 2009. As you can see there, a couple years with the Braves, a couple years with the Cubbies. And a former teammate of Jake Skoll, Reese Hampton, Sam Claycamp as well. Playing 2021 in Melbourne, he was a teammate of Reese Hampton and Jake Skoll. Of course, coming back here in the USA, a little bit of time with Slam and Sammy. Throws fastball, curveball, slider, changeup, cutter. And he's a menacing man on the mound. Six foot four, 235 pounds. Let's take a look at how the bananas line up against him. It's the same first eight that you've seen pretty much over and over again when everyone's active. D.R. Meadows, Eric Jones Jr., Michael Deeb, Dan Oberst, Dakota McFadden, Jackson Olson, Ryan Cox, and Bill Leroy. You can pencil them all in. Danny Hosley and Dalton Malden at the bottom there, nine and 10. In a spot where you've seen them a lot, Noah Bridges and Vinny DeRubius mixing in as well. And the Bananas, they may be down two runs here in the first, but they have a 357 batting average in the first inning with quite a few walk-offs in the first inning as of late. We could definitely see a rally and a potential, you know, point earned for them at the end of this inning. You saw the Bananas walk off the first inning last night, one to nothing. Then the Drop Bears pushed their first two runs across in the third. Nanners responded with three runs. Heater in there for strike one at 85 miles per hour. We have Trackman in the building for the second straight evening and thankful for it. Front door bender. Count 0 and 2 on DR, a collegiate banana from a summer ago. Helped the Nanners get that second straight Coastal Plain League championship. It's been excellent in his first world tour, hitting 350, tied for the team high with a 433 on base percentage. And doesn't bite at the bender low and away. He's going to try and steal first, and he'll succeed. 
first steal of first base on the tour for the doctor. And it's surprising that it's taken so long given his speed. But DR Meadows has held down this leadoff spot tremendously. This is his 11th consecutive game batting leadoff. And in that time, DR, he's got a 448 batting average, seven sprints. This guy's getting on base however he can. And that was the perfect situation. Behind 0 and 2, Tyrell Harris has nasty stuff. Let's get aboard. DR had two sprints last night. Of course, those erased with the precipitation. Heater at 86 misses. Eric Jones Jr. spent time in the Minnesota Twins at Seattle Mariners organizations as a minor leaguer, laces that to left out of the reach of Paul Winland. DR racing around third, Gillum sending him home. RBI double from EJ. And he's the inning tying run. Michael Deeb will represent the inning winning run at the dish. What a big hit from Eric Jones here, extending his hit streak to now seven games. And by the way, that now gives him the team lead with eight runs batted in against challenger opponents. He was previously tied at the top with seven with Jackson Olsen. And he extends his team lead on the tour. That was his 31st stake overall. It was an 85 mile an hour heater. It left his bat at 92. Fastball misses just a pinch up, once again at 86. So you see where Tyrell Harris is sitting at 36 years old. Michael Deeb, former product of the Chicago White Sox, four-year football player at Notre Dame, couple years of college ball at Bethune-Cookman. And now in his third world tour, he's been excellent, hitting 322, a 394 OBP. Low cue ball to the left side, gonna be a tough play. Lavender across the diamond, it's an errant throw. Malachi Mitchell, the pinch runner, will go to third on the E5 from Josh Lavender. It's an infield single for Michael Deeb. And now the tying run here in the first, just 90 feet away, and the inning winning run is aboard. And you're seeing why Tyler Gillum and Adam Byron love the starting three of DR Meadows, Eric Jones Jr., and Michael Deeb. All of these guys getting hits, getting on early and setting a bananas rally here in the first. It was not a barrel, but it looks like a line drive in the book. There is that beautiful front door bender. There is some spin on that curve. Came in at 71. 2,282 spin rate. And a cut and a miss. Goes to the heater, that one up at 88. Dan Oberst behind 0-2, the Nanners leader in batting average at 379 on base percentage, tied with DR at 433. OPS, he stands alone at 1062. And doesn't chase the fastball up and out once again at 88 miles per hour. And when you look at the OPS plus numbers for Dan Oberst, 100 of course league average. Dan at a 159 clip for the Bananas leading the team. He's been phenomenal, especially now in this cleanup spot. Michael Deeb off with the pitch. The only play is at first base. Malachi scores. The inning is tied at two runs apiece. And the winning run in scoring position with just one out. 17th ribeye for Mr. Oberst. That was an incredible decision by Michael Deeb to be off on that pitch, getting him into scoring position here. Instead of a potential double play, you've got Dakota McFadden with the chance for another first inning walkoff for the Bananas. That ball not caught by fans. Tyrell Harris was hoping it was. Everybody in the bleachers saying no catch. Dakota McFadden, the king of walk-offs for the Nanners. 14 of them on the tour. Would have had his 15th last night. I sound like a broken record. The stats do not matter. It's like whose line is, is it anyway? It's all made up and the points don't matter. This one rake foul over Tyler Gillum's head. 0-2 on DMAC, the DH in his third tour. By the way, Malachi Mitchell just scored his bananas. High 45th run of the tour. He's one behind Reese Hampton for the entire season high. Cut and a miss. Healthy swing from DMAC, and he tips his cap to Tyrell Harris. That was a big K. 
Yeah, we've seen that some from Dakota McFadden. He leads the Bananas in strikeouts on the tour. 11 of those now have come against challenger opponents. So really, he's trying to get a feel for these guys, but eventually he finds a way to put some good wood on it. That was a 77 mile per hour slider. Now the fate of the inning rests in the hands of Jackson Olsen. Bends out of the way of an 88 mile an hour fastball. The TikTok superstar has been excellent, hitting 327 on the tour, 362 on base percentage, and ahead two balls and no strikes. And it was once the Bananas got to Charleston that Jackson Olsen really started to turn it on for them. Originally started the season a little slow, but now you're seeing the bat pick up as well as his solid defense over at third base. That ball lifted out to left. Paul Winland ranging back, makes the catch. And the first inning ties at two runs each. No point is earned. It's 0-0 zero, zero going to the second. That was an exciting first frame of action. Let's send it down to Caitlin Scott to learn a little bit more about what a drop bear exactly is. Caitlin, what do you got for us? Hi, Vigo. So a lot of people think that drop bears may be these mythical creatures that are just used to scare off tourists in the Australian wilderness. We don't know for sure. I think they're kind of like Bigfoot, but the general gist around the creatures is they're distant cousins from koalas, except they're carnivorous, and they will, they can and will, jump on people's heads and attack if possible. Now, Caitlin, how would you prevent a drop bear from dropping on you and, and sinking their teeth in? For sure, yeah. For our travelers out there going to Australia, uh, here's a few tips. Not scientifically backed, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's as best as we have to work with right now. Vegemite behind the ears, toothpaste behind the ears, okay. and uh, a really interesting one, keen on oneself. <laughs> that is fascinating. Josh, you have anything you'd like to know about these drop bears? Caitlin, uh, how do you feel being around these players? Any fear that they're going to drop down on you, in a sense? You know, the good thing about being at a ballpark like this is there's not trees around, and typically that's where they would be dropping from. Now, this is their namesake, and of course, we'll get into more of how these people are similar to drop bears themselves later. But as of right now, not really scared. There was Vegemite in the locker room. I have it behind my ears right now. It seems to be working really well repelling the players. Thank you so much, Caitlin Scott. That was an illuminating report. Thank you, Vigo. There goes our animal expert, Caitlin. Looked like a little precipitation ended up landing on her there. I've, I've never gotten so scared before. I thought she was going to get soaked. <laughs> it's good control by Jeremy Atkinson to not dump the entire Gatorade on our darling Caitlin's head. See, this is exactly what I was trying to warn her about. <laughs> yeah, it was right on cue, man. She had no worries. How about this? Well, Caitlin and Dustin Baber goof around with those fancy hats they use out in the outback to protect yourselves from flies. Cooper Morgan, the center fielder, backflips into the dish and lines one foul, not caught by a fan, into the kid zone. Jared Donaldson back out on the mound. Facing the Drop Bears center fielder, the pride of Canberra, Australia, the capital. It's 7.18 p.m. Here in Savannah, Georgia, it is 9.18 a.m. in Canberra. Jump throw, and it plucks Mr. Morgan. The center fielder is aboard, leading off the top of the second. Like shades of the NBA Finals there with the Denver Nuggets. Up two games to one on the Heat. That was an alley-oop. Yeah, not exactly the alley-oop you'd prefer. We'll give the Bananas points for style there, but it's an unfortunate uh, start to the inning for Jared Donaldson. 7-8-9 for the Aussies. That one right back up the middle. Base knock for Jaden Cavill. Oh, Cooper Morgan almost fooled by his counterpart. He's able to pump the brakes. Two on and nobody out for the man in the nine hole, Luke Livy in the designated hitter. Luke out of Sydney, Australia. And ahead 1-0 as the 89 mile an hour heater from Donnie is up. Sides for the bread and butter, that devastating pitcher. Donaldson throws four-seam and two-seam fastballs. And a slider as well as this one is lifted into shallow right. Dalton Molden back to grab it, throw to second in time! Cooper Morgan doubled up. 
And that is a huge 4-6 twin killing. Wow. Credit Dalton Malden drifting back on that little 59 mile per hour blooper out there. He comes up with the catch and Ryan Cox over there covering the bag. Morgan showing some aggression over there on the base pass. The banana's able to double him up there. It was bang, bang, and now Jaden Cavill is going to be pinch run for by Funky Phil. <laughs> and his flip-flops. Or thongs, as they call them in Australia. Good call, Mr. Chad Reese. We went over that in the rain delay yesterday. To the top of the order we go. Max Brennan led off the ball game with a double, came around to score. One one count on the drop bear shortstop. Funky Phil, normally just an entertainment man for the drop bears, as that one's a little bit up. Two one count started in Sydney with the Blue Sox. Matt Cavill, the owner of this here club, said he's got ADHD. He just doesn't stop. And the crowds love him. Everybody knows him for the sideways hat. And Funky Phil confirmed when he's bopping around Sydney, if the hat is straight, he's incognito. As soon as he turns it to a 90 degree angle or so, he's a celebrity. <laughs> it's a big cut and a miss. Um, the splitter, Donnie with the help from the double play, is able to escape this one unscathed. And the Bananas just need one run to win the second inning. Josh Talevsky. We learned about Australia last night via your PowerPoint. What do we have this evening? So we did a little refresher course on banana ball for our Australian viewers. Correct. So now, Australia 1001, <laughs> welcome right. to class. This is for our American viewers. Now we learn about Australia. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. exactly right. Okay, cool. So we get into the first slide of this. Basic information, uh, Australia is officially known as the Commonwealth of Australia. Did not know that. It's a continent and a country, the only of its kind. Sixth largest country in the world. Uh, January 1st, 1901, the date of federation for them. Uh, it's a constitutional monarchy, which I'd explain it, but that's something above my pay grade, yeah, tell you the truth. Me too. Uh, Charles III, he's the current king. This happened in 2022, so rather recently, no in joke. fact. Uh, English, the official language, not Australian. And uh, the official currency is the Australian dollar, which equals 67 cents in the U.S. dollar. That's pretty good. And, uh, of course, the land down under, pretty common nickname, of course, Oz. And the wide brown land. I hadn't heard that one. So uh, we'll get into slide number two here. Some landmarks and features. Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Perth. Uh, we got some of the largest cities here. The Sydney Opera House, the Great Barrier Reef, and Mount Augustus, some of the landmarks. Mount Augustus, that's the largest monolith in the world. What really is a, cool. What's a monolith? Well, it's a land mass. Okay, cool. You'll, there will be a picture. Let's move past some it. notable wildlife, koalas, dingoes, and kangaroo jack from the movie. Of course. And uh, top exports, iron ore, coal, Coal, petroleum, gas, gold, and wheat. Uh, one of these is not like the other. I'd like to think wheat's the forgotten brother of the group. You see some of our pictures? Hey, there's Kangaroo Jack! And then, of course, I've got some Aussie slang here okay. that we can get into before yes. Tyrell Harris takes the mound. Uh, I'd like to point out Milko, the milkman. I yes. felt like you'd appreciate that. And, of course, the banana bender. That's someone from Queensland in Australia. That is eye-opening stuff, Josh Tolevsky. Thank you so much, my dear man. I feel like I am bursting with Australian knowledge. It is 7-8-9 for the Bananas here. The drop bear is batting nine. The Bananas is hitting 10 because they have an extra hitter alongside their DH, as they have done for 41 of the 42 games on this tour. It's an option in Banana Ball, not necessary. Coxie the shortstop, Bill O'Roy on deck, Danny Hosley in the hole. Payoff pitch coming to the pride of Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. <laughs> that one hit with some chutzpah to right, but tracking it down is Riley Light. And one away. Now Bill Leroy, the six-year banana for collegiately. And now in his second 
campaign as a pro. The king of Dublin, Georgia, one of the twin princes of Banana Land, alongside Cowboy Kyle Lewigs. The catcher for the Nanners trying to get something going with one away. And a 1 0 count. Tyrell Harris, when he was drafted in the 19th round back in 2009, didn't get a call from the Braves as Bills ahead 2 0. He actually got a call from a, a friend, Cantrell Davis, who told him he was drafted. Then Tyrell's mom had to get on the phone and say, Cantrell, if this is a joke, it's not a funny one. Cantrell confirmed with his pops that it, in fact, was true. As that is a four-pitch sprint. All seven drop bears have to touch this before it's live, and Bill respects their sprint defense. Looks like he would have been dead meat at second base, just a one-base sprint. And the Bananas are recognizing how effective the drop bear sprint defense is. I've got a comments today from some of the guys talking about how much they're shading that outfield in, a big reason of why they kept the Bananas to first base on sprints. Bill's 14th sprint of the tour. He now has a two-to-one ratio to his seven strikeouts, a tour low for everyday guys. And now Danny Hosley, the right fielder, will swing away. The man out of Vienna, Virginia, just finished up at George Mason this past spring, his third college across five years. There goes Bill, and he's in trouble. Second pickle in as many nights for the Nanners. And Mr. Leroy, out of the baseline, tagged out anyhow by Jaden Cavill. And that eliminates the sprint, two away. To get back to Tyrell Davis, he actually didn't get a call from the Braves until about 20 minutes after he was drafted. Brian Bridges, one of their scouts, says, how does $1,000 sound, Mr. Harris? Tyrell said, is that negotiable? He said, no, you're, oh, wow! Danny Hosley laser beam straight into the mitt of Harris. And thanks to Bill being cut down by the pickoff. Only three bananas swing it. Still 0-0 going to the third. Boy, and what a sweet snag there by Harris. You likely would have seen a double play regardless. That would have been a quick snap throw back to first. I mean, he just put the glove out. Didn't even look surprised that he caught that ball. That finishes off a two minute and 53 second inning for Harris. Awful quick. Great play by the drop bears pitcher. And we will let Maceo and the boys boogie. We'll finish up Tyrell's story when he's back out on the bump. 0-0, zero, zero, going to the third inning. of a job by Maceo Harris and his backup dancers Malachi Mitchell, Vinny Derubius, DJ the Invader, and in his first night as a banana, Zach Phillips. Good first impression. A good dance by Zach and Maceo Harris? Nah, you sure about that one? I'm not at all. It's Maceo Harrison. I was just waiting for the sun after I talked about all the other guys out there. I saw Sam B questioning how the scoring works in Banana Ball in the comment section. It's match style play, just like you'll see in golf or tennis sometimes. If you win an inning, you get a point. Team with the most points at the end of two hours or nine innings, whichever comes first, wins your Banana Ball game. If you're tied at the end of that, you go to tiebreaker showdowns. We can cross that bridge if we come to it. Two, three, four for the drop bears in the top of the third. Donnie back out on the bump. Lavender, Cavill, and Winland do to swing it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. 
2-1 count on Lavi. Reached on an error and came around to score in the first. That one popped in foul territory. Jackson Olsen and Michael D pursuing it. They can't get there in time. 2-2 Two -two count on the man out of Atlanta, Georgia, who was a party animal in the One City World Tour last year as well. The 2021 Breakfast Bowl Banana, and they took down the Macon Bacon, seven games to two. And a banana in the first ever Challenger Series. Two games against the Kansas City Monarchs last spring. He goes down swinging on the 90 mile an hour fastball from Donaldson, his third K of the night. And when Josh Lavender was batting for the party animals last season on the world tour, we saw a lot of him holding down the three and the four hole for them. He's got just about as smooth a swing as you're allowed to have on the eastern seaboard. That one. Hot shot, diving stop. Ryan Cox kisses the ball, throw across the diamond in time to gun down Blake Cavill. Slap a star next to that one in the book. What a play by the glove magician. I mean, you look at it here on the replay, Ryan Cox with a stellar dive, and not only that, he's going to add a little flourish of his own, giving that ball a little smooch before throwing it onto first. Whoa, oh, look out. Paul Winland has to scoot his keister towards the plate. That one misses just a bit inside. Bill will go right through the bridge to get back behind the dish. Winland had an RBI one base sprint his first time. Now Donaldson. Cox, Malden, and Meadows all dancing. And really synchronized well. The pitch is fouled off. Good cut on the 90 mile an hour fastball. Cut and a miss. There's that devastating splitter. Comes in at 82 miles per hour. And so nice, you get to see it twice. Fourth strikeout for Donaldson and a 1-2-3, to top of the third inning. And yet another quick MPI in this ballgame, Jared Donaldson finishing off that inning in two minutes and 31 seconds. This is called the blindfolded race. So we have four contestants, Charlotte, Sophia, Janelle, and Katie. And they are going to be blindfolded and have to run around the bases. You have to guide them in the right direction. And I just found out we also have Katie here, who her boyfriend is the catcher. And they've been together for two years. So give a round of applause to Katie. All right. So here we go, blindfolds on. They're going to run all the way around the bases. Blindfolds on. Are we ready? No cheating. On your marks. Get set. Go! Here goes Katie! Here goes Katie! Alright, guide her around the bases. She's got to touch every base. Alright, get her to go to second. She's going the wrong way. Cheer her on to second base. Let her run. Keep going, Katie! This could take a while. But she looks like she's now taking the lead. And Charlotte's behind her, and so is Sophia. Katie's very confused. Run hard, Katie. Cheer her on, everybody. Cheer her on. She's now rounding third. Go straight, man. And she's beating Sophia. She's beating Charlotte. She's beating all of them. And now take off the blindfold. Take off the blindfold. Take off the blindfold. It's just you and me up here. All right, you want to make me the happiest man in the world? You ready? Yeah. Woo! She said yes! I can barely move. I'm shaking. Oh. 
Let's go see Cali. Let's go see Cali. Let's hear it for Katie and Zane! Well, a magical moment here in the 42nd game of the 2023 Banana Ball World Tour. We have our first in-game proposal. Congratulations. Congratulations to Zane and Katie, Nico Scala and Josh Talevsky now joined by Cowboy Kyle Lewigs in the booth, who loves love. I love love so much, Pico, and it just seems to follow us on the tour. I don't know. I mean, that's. I remember the proposal in Charleston. We've got one here in Savannah. Um, we had a wedding um, wherever we were at. I don't even remember where we were at, but. Goodness gracious, I love love. Josh is emotional. That's why he's not speaking right now. <laughs> I'm a little emotional, too. I'm not a big crier, but I feel like I could cry now. Yeah, um, I'm a little choked up here, Kyle. Um, <laughs> it's okay. Take your guys, time. Take all the time you no, need. No, no, no. I think, I think it's worth saying um, I love you guys. I, I do. <laughs> I love you, too, Josh. I love you as well, Kyle. Love you, everybody in the chat. Dalton Molden in the 10-hole leading off the bottom of the third. Skies that into shallow right. And Blake Cavill, cool as a cucumber, hauls it in for out number one. I also love Lauren Costa, who is your fiance in the house tonight from the great state of New York. That's a fact, Kyle. Great to see her. Love her. Love everybody. I also love Lauren. Yeah, that's good. That's good to hear. Oh, man, this is really beautiful. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good inning in the booth. Yeah. To the top of the order we go. Dior Meadows swinging away. He stole first in the first, came around to score. First inning was tied two runs apiece. Second inning was scoreless. As is our ball game as that one goes to the backstop. And DR with no steals of first base coming into this ball game. He's now done it in both his plate appearances. Yeah, really savvy banana ball move there. And uh, DR off to a good start. I know that he said in the dugout he didn't really love the matchup um, with the man on the mound having a tight breaking ball and a pretty good fastball. Um, so really looking to run any chance he can. And, you know, I can't say enough of good things about DR off the field. I mean, he's a very chivalrous man. He's very nice, as was his nephew in the uh, shopping for bananas. Old Rip was out there just tossing bananas to the, his fellow competitor. I mean, he was the best to ever do it. There goes DR. No throw from Jaden Cavill, who moved from first to behind the dish because... Zane Chavez just got engaged and should probably spend at least the half inning with his fiance. That feels right. You think they're going straight to the honeymoon or is he going to re-enter the game? I bet he stays in the ball game. We'll see what happens. Rich Thompson is the new man out at first base. 2-1 count on Eric Jones Jr. who doubled home DR in the first. And then was pinch run for by Malachi Mitchell who came in to score the inning tying run. Now DR over to third base on the pass ball. Now it looks like the inning winning run is going to be on third base here with one out. EJ swinging a hot stick. Really good at bat his first AB. And that is ball four. It's going to be an easy walk off win for the Nanners. DR scores, and the first point in the ball game goes to Savannah. Eric, Eric Jones Jr. has his 10th walk off on the tour. And his second stake of the night. As the bananas run through the crowd to celebrate, we have a very special mid-inning activity here. Going to the fourth inning, this is Vegemite, probably the most infamous of all the delicacies from the land down under. And I've got it. I'm so scared. I know that you eat it with toast. I heard that it is salty, but I heard it also is a bre uh, like a breakfast item. Yes, it We've is. We've got some nicely buttered toast. I'm hoping that pairs well with it. Um, I would be lying to you if I said I wasn't scared. And what a time to bring in Chris Oxpring, the head coach of the Aussie Drop Bears and last night's starting pitcher, former San Diego Padre. Chris, can you give us the rundown on Vegemite, man? Uh, it's an experience all to itself. Don't expect it to be like Nutella or peanut butter or anything of that kind of thing. It is very, very different. 
Now, so how much of this? Luck. How much that's of way too that's much. Way for too much. Okay, for your first experience. Know. Bombs away. Good, good luck. Oh, no. Hmm. Now, Biko likes most things. Mm -hmm. I haven't really found anything that Biko doesn't really enjoy. That's, Ooh, that's a yeah, let, let, me, let me help you out here. Let me yeah, help you out a, here. Yeah, I want All you to prepare right, we, we mine. Kinda, I feel good about that. Kind of mix Whoa. it up a little bit, get it a little bit going. That's strong. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. All right, so there you go. That Kyle, that, here. Can you, can you do mine up? Yeah, no, so, that's okay. yours. That's yours. I want All him right. to do mine completely. <laughs> he's, he's now, oh, you guys are, you guys say are so you, scared. How often would you say you eat? Vegemite. Oh, wow. Vegemite every day. Every day. Yep. So, so my it, daughter it eats it for breakfast and for lunch thing. every single day. For breakfast and lunch. Breakfast and lunch has Vegemite on toast for breakfast and then Vegemite and cheese on for a sandwich for lunch at school every day. See, and now, it's her choice to do that. Yeah, yeah. She makes her own. What do yeah. you think? So now when you, when you kind of get used to it, you can just uh, go straight in for it. <laughs> oh, off camera as we're back to the action, Chris just took a full spoonful to the mouth. Oh, wow. And you're not puckering or anything. You're just oh, no. This, dude, this is what I grow up on from the time you're born until the time we still have it now. Well, we munch down on Vegemite in the booth. Vincent Chapman shakes his keister <laughs> like only the world's best dancing home plate umpire can. Boy, is it great to have him only <laughs> balls and strikes again here tonight. <laughs> Has served the entirety of his two-game suspension due to the events that... Happened in the conclusion of the Tulsa, Oklahoma game last Monday, and I hope he's never suspended again. That was fantastic. Me as well. And I'm going to say, you know, we've got to get back to the hot topic. Right. I think this stuff could start my car. <laughs> but also, I re like I, I enjoy it with the bread being toasted and having butter on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the key is the, it's the good. key is the butter, right? The and butter. the quantity, right? Yeah, because big, I mean, big, you're eating a completely different slice of toast than I am. Right. I mean, you've he, got <laughs> a hearty amount on there. Biko's got enough Vegemite on there to polish your shoes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's good stuff. So, is there any like what does Vegemite pair the best with? Like, like. With a sandwich, you put that on turkey, you put that on oh, ham, no, no, you no, just no, no, eat no. It's it just, straight it's, up. It's just Vegemite on toast, mate. You don't need anything else. Wow. Well, the Vegemite discussion rages on. Riley Light just struck out, and the boys are celebrating like they just won the World Series. We are the champions. My queen is blaring. I mean, this is quite I a think, celebration. I think somebody threw a jar of Vegemite on the field, and they were fighting over it. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, you're not saying much. What do you think, man? Get back to me. It's not bad, actually. I went in for a second bite because I wanted to be a fair critic. Yeah. And I liked it a lot more upon second bite. So I feel like I might be coming around to this. Five days on the night now for Donnie. It is five, six, seven for the drop bears here in the top of the fourth. Still have over an hour and 16 minutes to go. With six more innings on the docket. We're at a great pace. Zane Chavez. The catcher grounded out his first time, then got engaged a half inning ago. He's back in the ball game. How about that? <laughs> so the family, Chris, is fired up that you just ate a spoonful of Vegemite. That's good stuff. <laughs> you don't do that every day. No, not normally I don't, but um, yeah, something, something that I don't mind land, every you know? now and again. <laughs> I heard <laughs> Dalton Malden hauls it in two down. I heard a spoonful of Vegemite a day keeps the doctor away. Oh, yeah. Gives you rosy cheeks, mate. <laughs> Is <laughs> it healthy? No. Yes, very. Really? Really? Yeah, it's got lots of lots of vitamins and stuff oh, in it. No. Yeah, it's, it is good for you, but um, there is quite a lot of salt or sodium content. I'm in all in on the salt that, um, that they say can't might not be good for you, but <laughs> I think, parents, we don't care. I think us Americans are built on salt and yeah. sodium. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Dolan Molden, glove flip to Ryan Cox, 360 to first in time. Damn. Miraculous trick play by the Nanners middle infielders as Coxie gets bowled over by Molden. And a quick one, two, three, top of the fourth inning for Donnie. I can't tell you how long those guys up the middle have been practicing that play. <laughs> and for it to actually be able to happen during the game is insane. They practice it in the six hole with the third baseman getting it from the shortstop. They practice it with balls up the middle. Everywhere. That's awesome. That's awesome. See, now that that right there, you can appreciate. As a traditionalist baseball fan, yeah. or somebody who's here to watch the show that, that you guys are putting on every night, that's impressive. That was a very athletic play by Dalton Malden and Ryan Cox. 
Josh Tulevsky, did you give Coxie a trick play for the diving stop and kissing the ball throwing over to first? Indeed, I did. Because that was the play that started as a normal play and ended as a trick play. Remember I agree. that conversation? If you get a routine grounder, kiss the ball and throw it over to first, no trick play. But the added degree of difficulty of diving... That's where my, my mindset is. There was a flourish there. Mm -hmm. And in my book, that constitutes a trick. It got you. It made you feel something. That's why I'm the savant, Kyle. <laughs> you know it when you see it. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's hey baby time. And how about Funky Phil here getting after it? I've got to give a tidbit on Funky Phil. So we, uh, we had our last day of camp this morning. Um, we showed up at the right hour of 8 a.m. to pull the tarp off the field. Um, we only had 12 brave, brave soldiers to pull it. Those were the people that were working camp. Right. It was soaked with water, probably weighed 10 million pounds. And out comes Phil out of the Aussie's dugout and asked if we were going to pull the tarp. We said yes. He asked if he could help. And then after we got the tarp off the field, he asked if he could stay and hang out with the children all day at camp. Um, so I basically just threw him out where I thought might be a good spot for him, and the kids loved him. I mean, we can't keep we can't hold their attention at all during the game or during camp at all. But anytime Phil was talking, God forbid you put him on the mic, the kids are listening, and it was it was a sight to see. Chris, we've talked about Funky Phil a little bit on the broadcast last night and tonight, but can you let the people know what, what he means to you guys? Uh, he's just so passionate. Like baseball, kids, field, everything that's you know on and off the field. He does it at home for the love of it. I reckon he enjoys it more than all of us put together, all of the bananas put together, every fan in the stands put together. He was he was chuffed when we uh, told him he could actually go out there and be our pinch runner for the <laughs> for the day. He um he almost cried. <laughs> That's how much it means to him. It's the his passion and, and energy, man. If we could have that as baseball players, it'd be incredible. Or just any aspect of life. Is Michael Deeb's gonna do his own rendition of The Peaches by Jack Black, I believe that was. I think it was that from the Mario movie? It is. I played it at camp one day and all the kids stopped what they were doing and started singing. This is, this is new territory for me. I'm lost, but I'd like to put that on the docket, watching at some point. It's 3-4-5 for the Nanners here in the bottom of the fourth. They lead by a point, just need one run in this half inning to earn their second point of the night as Deeb, who singled his first time, sends that a mile high. And it comes down in Max Brennan's glove at short. Now, with your short experience, that was the game that got rained out last night, and um, you get to experience it from the mound, yep. um, where I've experienced a couple games in, in my time. Yes. Um, what were your initial thoughts, um, comments, concerns, questions? Uh, no concerns. Uh, <laughs> no concerns whatsoever. The initial thoughts, man, was the energy that you can feel in the stadium when you get out there is... It's phenomenal. You don't get to, you don't have that every day, you know. Um, I was lucky enough to play in Asia in both Japan and South Korea, and it's somewhat similar but different at the same time, if that makes sense. Um, but the, it, just the feeling and the excitement to be out there and be able to be a kid and have fun and just enjoy the game, it was phenomenal. It's a great effort by Zane Chavez over on that foul ball. He ends up ricocheting off that low wall as Maceo Harrison does his world-famous wrecking ball dance. Your favorite. That's a fact. Dan Obers grounded out his first time but picked up a ribeye. And that's what tied the first inning at two runs apiece. And the count still 0-2 on the Bananas extra hitter. Bryson Wheeler, our track man specialist and clubby extraordinaire for the Bananas. I saw you eat some Vegemite off your finger. What's the review? It was not real good. I would call, I think you could definitely start someone's car. <laughs> That's a South Georgia man through and yeah. through. You left off Camp Worker on his uh, title resume. Uh, I left off, I think, five or six or maybe even 23 different things he does here in Banana Land. Dan's still hanging tough. Uh, I would like the record to show that I ate the entire piece of toast, and I liked it. I did, too. Yeah, I didn't have any problems uh, I'm pretty, with it. I'm pretty impressed with the effort here on the toast, I must say. Um, in my experience of uh, subjecting uh, residents of the United States to, <laughs> <laughs> to Vegemite, uh, very, very few people get through the first uh, slice of bread. 
I think I could have tackled another with the correct portions on there. I don't think I want any part of the slice of bread that you were eating, Biko. I was, it was delicious. It's a little, it was a little chunky. I mean, I didn't really put a lot of effort into the spread, and the bread is two days old as well. It was. That's good to know. Yeah, it was from breakfast at uh, the breakfast place, actually, after we filmed the ripe rundown a couple days ago. Ah, I wasn't able to go. No, because you were running a... Bananas Youth Camp as Dan Ober steals second base. He's now 20 for 23 on the tour. I'm going to push the inning run to second base. But like you were saying, the uh, the energy and stuff, um, I can definitely relate to that. I mean, we've been to, what, 14 cities now on our tour? 15 if you 15. count. Beautiful Savannah. That is true. And, I mean, most of the cities we're going to, they got stadiums that seat, you know, double what we seat here at Grayson Stadium. But yeah. it's just there's always something going on, and there's, there's a really special energy here when we get to play in Grayson Stadium. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's different. I, I can't explain why. Yeah. It's just different, yeah. but in a good way, like not in a bad way, yeah. by no means. Well, check swing, 2-2 two -two count now on Dakota McFadden. He struck out swinging his first time and tipped his cap to Tyrell Harris. Former 19th round draft pick of the Atlanta Braves back in 20, check that, 2009. Can't get to 2009, I don't think people say that. This one's sky to center. Cooper Morgan makes the catch. Dan Oberst Deeks at third and will stay put. Two down, and it's going to be Jackson Olsen who flew out to left his first time. Now, Chris, I'm, I'm curious. Are there any differences between baseball fans in America versus the fans over in Australia? Uh, yeah, we, we uh, speak a little different. Oh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, Good to but know. no, no, uh, no, not really. Um, everybody's there for the same reasons, right? We all want to see good baseball. Um, we all know what's going on on the field. You, you try and relate to the players that are out there. Uh, the, the newer fans like a lot of things. If they've never seen it before, it's different. But you know, if if they've been around the, the game and been exposed to the game, then no, then there's no real different. Um, they're just as passionate and just as crazy as, we, as the baseball players are themselves. How about Jackson Olsen banging that off the top of the wall? He drives in Dan Oberst. And the Nanners walk off the fourth inning. They have a two-point lead tonight. And, and they're going to hit the quad. The full team quanning celebrate their second point earned in as many innings. God, that ball was banged. Yep. I was I was wondering <laughs> why Riley Light wasn't going to make an attempt at it, and I thought he was deking us. No, I, I thought he was under it. I, I understand why now. Uh, okay, the bananas up two points to nothing. We'll be back with Kyle Lewigs and Chris Oxpring in a minute. For now, we throw it down to the young professor. It's time to see if these two cats can keep their job. Job. We've got some couples that are down there on a date night. These fellows are going to have to serve them this fine cuisine out here, but we're not gonna make it easy. It's Banana Land. We're gonna spin them around, make them a little dizzy, because it gets kind of crazy in Banana Land. Fellows, are we ready to do this thing? All right, if you fall down, I'm gonna spin you again, so. Get ready, fellas. Michael's ready. Craig is ready. All right, fellas, heads down on the bats. Let's start spinning it out. Let's count it out. Go. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Are y'all having a good time tonight? All right. Oh, uh, this is six, seven, eight. Are you sure you're having a good time tonight, everybody? Oh, uh, nine, ten. Go serve that food, fellas. Uh-oh. It's, <laughs> it's getting a little dicey. And Michael got there first. He almost took out Walker. He missed the tray entirely. Craig, you got to spin it out. Get it. Michael's got it. All right. He's on. He's on wobbly legs. Uh oh. But he could go. Oh, there goes the sun. <laughs> We're gonna need another pair of shorts on aisle three. Michael's gonna get there. He does, ladies and gentlemen. Michael gets to keep his job. And Craig, we wish you the best in your future endeavors. Give it up for keep your job, everybody. Number 99, Jaden Cavill. That was so funny. Always fun to see if a couple fellas can keep their job. It was a good effort by everybody involved. As Jared Donaldson out for his fifth inning of work and now all of his teammates are going to come on in looks like donnie needs some work done on him dalton malden becomes his table and jackson olsen 
as well as the rest of his teammates giving him a full team massage. It's a human, human pit stop. Just about every part of Donnie's body being refreshed. And the guys will get back to their places. He crow hops in, 92 mile in a heater, fouled off by Jaden Cavill in the count 0 and 2. Good effort to get some lumber on it right there. I think yeah. I, I could go for one of those in between every pit. <laughs> we might not make the two hour time limit, but that'd be nice. Check swing, he certainly did go. Sword. And Cavill, who singled his first time, is the sixth strikeout victim of the evening for Donnie. Now to the nine hole and Luke Livian. The DH popped into the four six double plays. Looking the wrong way currently. See if he takes a cut. No, oh, and he actually gets a ball instead. Now the drop bears are all gonna come out and make sure that he's actually facing Jared Donaldson. Just good teammates helping out when you really need it most. 2-0 count now on the drop bears designated hitter. Gotta check on your boys sometime, you know? Or hold them accountable, as Reginald Hort would say. He would say that. Heater gets the low outside corner, count two and one. Pico Scala with Josh Tulevsky joined by tomorrow's starting pitcher for the Bananas, Cowboy Kyle Lewigs, and last night's starting pitcher for the Aussie Drop Bears, Chris Oxpring. Look what the Nanner's starting pitcher tonight found, Jared Donaldson. I think he was in between about two or three different trick plays in his head there. Yeah. Wasn't quite sure what he wanted to do. I think he was just happy to get it to go in his glove after that first inning mishap. That's a fact. To the top of the order we go, Max Brennan, who doubled to lead off the ball game. He did that last night, too, before the rain ruined our fun. Three innings in the books. Certainly did interrupt us last night, didn't it? <laughs> how about you guys making, how long is the journey from Australia? Door-to-door uh, -door was about 28 hours in total, direct. Sydney, Dallas, Dallas, Savannah. And because of the time difference, you barely lose anything coming here, but it'll be very different on the return trip. Uh, so what's the time now? It's... Uh, uh, oh, behind the back, 10, Ryan Cox. It's 10 a.m. tomorrow morning yes. in Australia right now. It is. We're living in the future. Yep, we that certainly kind of are. stuff mind boggles me. I mean, we went to... We went out to uh, Vegas, and we're three hours behind yep. where we are here, and I could, I could barely wrap my mind around that. <laughs> God forbid we go to Australia. Donnie is cruising. Uh, before we say goodbye to you, Mr. Cowboy Kyle Lewigs, I know that you have to take part in the next run celebration for the bananas because you crafted it yourself. Yes, I did. Okay, well, let's see. I feel see. really good about it. We have some fan mail. Welcome in. Pico, Kyle, Chris, Josh, off camera, just absolutely moking some stats right now. And here it is. Wow, this is beautifully drawn. Yeah, it's really good. You kidding me? Who's Dear Savannah Abby. Bananas, I'm Abby. I'm nine years old, and I love watching your games with my dad. I play minor softball. Our team name is the Lady Blue Jays. I live in America, but I hope to watch your games in real life. Do you live in America? Yes, you do. Okay, good. Yeah, of course you can. We're all over America, 33 cities this year. Thank you for making baseball fun again. Love, Abby. And over F here it says... F-F-E-A. Correct, F-F-E-A, and that acronym means Fans First Entertain Always. Very well done, Abby. Abby Outstanding. This, this is amazing. Yeah, really good Outstanding. stuff. Outstanding. Are you kidding me? And you can see where you can send us fan mail. Uh, Kyle Lewigs, thank you so much for coming up to the booth, man. How, how excited? You can't obviously tell us what's going to happen if the Bananas win this inning. How excited are you for it? Um, I'm excited to get my steps in. That's about as much as I can tell you guys. Oh. And uh, live some nostalgic days um, that I really enjoyed in my middle school days. Okay, terrific. Well, best of luck. We'll let Appreciate you flee. That. Thank you. And make sure you get down there in time. There goes tomorrow's starting pitcher Good for luck, the man. Nanners. And that leaves Biko and Josh with Chris Oxpring, former San Diego Padre who has played in about half the countries in the world, I think I did the math. Ryan Cox with the line out to center. Shortstop for the Nanners retired. He's now 0 for 2 with a couple flyouts. And Bill Leroy, who worked a sprint before being picked off, will swing away. So, Chris, throughout all your journeys throughout the world, at least fill in the people how many different countries you actually have pitched professionally in. Uh, Australia. Of course. New Zealand. Naturally. Taiwan. South Korea. Japan, the United States, Canada, 
Pan Panama, Greece. I'm sure there's, a, there's more out there, but that's about the ones I can think of on the top of my head. I think I got nine there. Nine? Um, I know I've visited more US states than I have not. Um, I think at the last count it was 40 United States I've Whoa! visited throughout my career. You're doing way better than Josh and I. I think, I don't know. We've spent a combined 48 years here in the country. <laughs> You've only just got me covered <laughs> between, between the two of you. Bill Leroy with a barrel deep to left. Could be trouble. Oh, nice oh, running catch. My. Paul Winland just in front of the Savannah Cardinals sign. That was a heck of a play. Yeah, what a snag by Paul Winland, almost snapping that ball down for the air. Not even surprised he caught that ball. A little fist pump there at the end. <laughs> hey, why not? What a play. Dang. Not an Australian, but a good addition to your team, huh, Paul oh, Winland? Definitely, definitely. Happy to have all these guys here, mate. It's uh, the... Um, the atmosphere in the clubhouse is as much fun as it is out on the field, just with all the new guys together and stuff like that, so it's wonderful. Uh-oh, we got a shoey action happening at third base here. Whoa! So a shoey, that's what you call it when you drink a beer out of a shoe, huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> Some uh -oh. more Australian lingo has been adopted here. Wow, that was a prosthetic <laughs> leg. Oh, my goodness. Heath Gray, what a madman. That was our friend from the broadcast last night. Oh, <laughs> uh, that might be one of the better things I've seen on a baseball field. <laughs> That's fantastic. Every night, it's something different in Banana Land. Great to see you guys getting in on the fun as Danny Hosley will swing away with two down. Tyrell Harris out for his fifth inning of work. And that's a line drive base knock. Nanner still, still have life here. Hosley racing towards second. Throw for Cooper Morgan. Not in time. Oh, do we challenge here? This will be the question. Do we challenge? Is the challenge coming in? See if your partner in crime, Rich Thompson, wants it challenged. He's asking his middle infielders, and they say no. Waving it away. Yes. Max Brennan says Hosley got in there, so... No challenge from the Drop Bears. And now Matt Wolf pinch hitting for Dalton Malden and being rolled up to the dish in his patented Rodeo Clown barrel. Originally from Joy, Oklahoma. For the past few years, a firefighter in Oklahoma City. Beautiful backflip, nails the dismount, and he's ready to rumble with the inning winning run in scoring position. A little surprised from a tactical standpoint that they're not pinch running right here. Danny Hosley, I would say, is just about as fast as Malachi Mitchell. There you go. That shows my inexperience right there. Well, it's only your second game in Banana Land, really game 1.33 here. <laughs> We're going to break it down mathematically. 2-0 count on Matt Wolf, who's 0 for 4 on the tour, but great at getting bat on ball. Yeah, only one strikeout in his four at-bats, and he also had a hit-by-pitch against the Monarchs. Lavender across the diamond. Nice scoop. Zane Chavez started the night behind the dish, taking over at first base, and that was possibly an inning-saving play. Uh-oh. The fifth inning and 0-0. Zero, zero. Nanners still lead the game by two points. As you get another look at the great scoop from Zane Chavez, and... As we head to the sixth inning, we are blessed to be joined by the man in the yellow tux, owner of the Savannah Bananas, Mr. Jesse Cole. How magical is it to have the Aussie Drop Bears having fun with us here tonight? Uh, it's so fun to see them embracing Banana Ball. You know, they reached out really early when we were planning this year's tour, and you could tell by their enthusiasm for playing this game and joining us, and they are living up to it right now. This has been so fun to watch. Well, yeah, when you travel from the land down under, expectations are high. How about their sprint defense? That's the best we've seen from a challenger. I mean, they prepared, and then having a double celebration tonight because they saw ours last night, I mean, they are on their game, and this is all you hope for, and, and I really 
really believe in the future banana ball is going to be an international game. And to see, obviously, from Australia, they might be the first ones to adapt it. Yeah, they're making a good case for it there. Did you see the beer chugged out of a prosthetic leg over there at third base? That was definitely a first. That slightly <laughs> scared me, confused me, but I think the fans loved it. But again, you never know what's going to happen with these guys. They keep shocking us out here in a good way, so I can't wait to see what happens at the end of this night. We got a two-point lead for the Nanners. Four innings left in the books and a little less than an hour to play. What's your prediction for the rest of tonight? <laughs> you know, I'm going to change it up tonight. I think it's going to come down to the last inning tonight. <laughs> no, seriously, I think it's going to be fun to watch. I think they got some more surprises uh, from them, so it's going to be exciting to see what happens. Jesse Cole, as always, thank you so much for the time, my dear man. So much. Love you, Bigo. Love you too, Jess. There goes the man in the yellow tux, owner of the Savannah Bananas since the team's origin with his wife, Emily, back in 2016. And what a wild seven-plus years it has been. Three Coastal Plain League championships in the books in six opportunities. And now a 33-city, 20-state, 87-game world tour from mid-February to mid-September, wrapping up in Cooperstown, New York, in the Baseball Hall of Fame. It's been a wild ride, but nothing has been quite as cool as the Aussie Drop Bears coming into our city by the sea and absolutely embracing Banana Ball. And I think that's where you see Banana Ball at its best, is just seeing the buy-in, especially from challenger opponents. Cutting a miss from Josh Lavender, 2-3-4 for the Drop Bears. Jared Donaldson out for his sixth inning of work. Blake Cavill on deck, Paul Winland in the hole. And a quick 0-2 count. 90 and 89 mile an hour fastballs from Donaldson, respectfully. He's working quickly. Goes back to the heat, and that one fouled right over our heads in the booth. You guys talk about the buy-in and everything like that. The lead up before we actually came to, over here to experience this firsthand, the chat group that we had going, it was 100 messages a day for months in advance <laughs> to, to all of this, just with the excitement, the talk, the energy, uh, the whole experience. Guys were so excited to be a part of it and, and ex come here and see it firsthand, but then being lucky enough to actually experience it, it was incredible. It absolutely warms our heart to hear, and we are so thankful you made the 28-hour journey here. It's just after 10 a.m., in Sydney, Australia, where a good bunch of your guys hail from. Yes, sir. Including Blake Cavill at the dish. Represented Australia in the 2015 Little League World Series. And has played on the U18 and U8 and U15 World Cup teams. And as he protects the 89 mile an hour heater right there. Cavallo for two on the day, strikeout and a ground out, although ground out was ticketed for center field. He was robbed by Ryan Cox. And this is an extremely talented baseball player. I mean, this guy absolutely hits. And not only does he do that, is he hit 379 this past spring in 53 games played. As he goes down swinging here, seventh strikeout of the night for Jared Donaldson. Those numbers were from his time at Northwest Florida State College. Here's Jesse Cole. The world's tallest pitcher. Please welcome Dakota Stilts O'Brien. To finish up on Blake Cavill, this is one of the things that really wows me, Chris. His first experience in the ABL was an inning pitched, and he got a strikeout, did hit the first batter he faced, then gave up a foul home run, but worked back, scoreless inning, then he decided, ah, pitching's not for me, I think I'm going to hit. And he has destroyed junior college baseball in the United States across his last two years. Yep, certainly has. Uh, just has a natural knack of being able just to put bat on ball, uh, in, especially in tough situations, and in pitches counts, just finds a way to fight it off as we saw, and um, good things happen. He had 15 bombs in those 53 games this past spring. Played 103 out of the possible 104 games across his two years at Northwest Florida State, now transferring to Western Kentucky. Quick 0-2 count on Paul Winland. 
A strikeout and an RBI sprint, a part of his 0 for 1 night. Stilts has added a slider to the arsenal and has been awful effective on the mound so far on the tour. Yeah, we've seen a couple of strikeouts from Dakota Stilts all Britain, and it's because he can mix in some breaking pitches with his regular fastball. Certainly the most bizarre at bat of young Paul Winland's career as that one goes behind him, count two and two. Contemplated stealing first base <laughs> yeah. for half an instant. Glad he decided against it. You're already seeing that banana ball IQ in these guys. Good on him. Uh, mate, we have uh, been trying with all our might to um, <laughs> get get the feel for it, to understand it, and and embrace it and stuff like that. So the guys are so excited to be out there and do it and act like little kids that we always want to be, right? It is a scoreless inning. One, two, three, go to the drop bears. Two of the outs from Jared Donaldson. One from Dakota Stilts Albritton, who continues to get the outs. How about the trickery between Eric Jones Jr. and Matt Wolf? Good baseball IQ. Stilts wasn't going to make it over there from the mound. And we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Nanners up a couple points. And the Banana Nanas doing their thing. We'll be back in the booth after our elderly dance troupe boogies. DR the Doc Meadows. Well, the banana nan is absolutely stupendous as per usual. Top of the order for the Nanners. Here in the bottom of the six, Tyrell Harris out for his sixth inning of work. He was walked off on in the fourth and the fifth. Gave up a couple runs in the first that allowed the Bananas to tie that frame as DR will sword himself. Bills and misses on the nasty curveball. 0-2 count on the Bananas center fielder who has stolen first base twice tonight. Diving stop at short by Brennan across the diamond in time to get the speedy Meadows. That was an excellent play by the Drop Bear shortstop. Yeah, that was a sweet gem for Max Brennan, who's man shortstop in both of these games for the Drop Bears. Not only is he leading the charge offensively with a couple of hits so far, but a great play up the middle there. Nothing better as a pitcher when you get great defense behind you. It's invigorating, huh? That's already invigorating being just out there at the moment. <laughs> when that happens, it even pumps you up even more. So DR, who had scored twice and reached twice, He's retired for the first time tonight. 2-0 count on Eric Jones Jr. One for one, an RBI double his first time, an RBI sprint his last trip to the dish. 86 mile an hour heater misses just outside. 3-0 count on the World Tour leader in homers, EJ with nine. And he cranks that one foul just a bit early. I'm not sure he was ready for the fastball right there. <laughs> Well, Harris took a little off. That was a get me over 84 mile an hour heater. And then throws that one at 85 above the zone. EJ has his second sprint of the night. Brennan hits the dirt. Jones is going to test the sprint defense of the drop bears. And uh, just. We fumbled the first one. Just ahead of the flip from late to Morgan. The seventh and final players that had to touch the ball before it was live. And that is the first time in now nearly nine full innings of banana ball that the Nanners have gotten a guy to second base on a sprint, and that is a testament to the Drop Bears defense right there. Thank you. Malachi Mitchell, Flash the Kid, son of the Olympic sprinter Dennis Mitchell, who's got every medal under the sun for the United States in the early to mid-90s, will pinch run and immediately grabs his world tour leading 30 step, 37th steal in 39 tries. 
Now the inning winning run 90 feet away. Michael Deeb takes the curveball down. 1-1 one, one count. One for two on the night. Little infield single his first time. Now the drop bears bring the entire field into the infield. All seven guys behind the pitcher and catcher are in on the infield grass. This is one of the most incredible shifts I've seen in my life. <laughs> Was this from your mind, Chris? I'm not that smart. Hot shot, it's barreled. Brennan to the dish, and Malachi's out. The seven men in the infield shift works. Unbelievable. Are they gonna challenge here? Are you gonna challenge? We'll see if Mel Melanie Orton throws the challenge. She's the fan representative. And it looks like we're gonna get it. Oh, and we have a kid on the mound. Unbelievable, wow. Tyrell Harris's son runs onto the mound and now exits stage left as Dalton Molden plays his guitar in the third base box. And we did have a challenge through all of that. This play is being challenged by Melanie Orton, the representative of the fans. Josh Tulevsky, I just broke my Riedel headset, so you're the only man on the challenge, buddy. Okay. Too strong. Get out of the gym, man. All right, Zach, I'm not, I'm not seeing a good enough angle where Malachi's getting in there. I think this call's gonna stand. Yeah, this call's gonna stand, Zach. Call is, call is standing, Zach. I agree, Josh. So the fans are now a career 0 for 3 in challenges. Going back to the two in Nashville and one here in Grayson Stadium. And now the coordinating producer of BTV, Chad Reese, is going to try and fix the damage I did to this headset. I literally ripped it in half. BK, you're too strong, mate. <laughs> stay, stay, in the, stay in the press box, mate. Don't go back to the gym. He wanted to be relieved by his son. Please welcome Lincoln Harris to the field. How Give it up cool one this? more time for How Tyrell cool. Harris. Well, that's about as cool as it gets right there. Lincoln Harris comes out to grab Pops. And Tyrell with an excellent evening on the bump. Great arsenal for the consummate pro guy who is just like you, Chris, has played in about half the countries in the world. Yeah, he's a great bloke to be around. Uh, the ultimate competitor, but also the ultimate teammate to have on your, on your side, uh, in the dugout, on the field, just a good all-around bloke. I was talking earlier about his story when he got drafted in the 19th round in 2009 by the Atlanta Braves. And he was only offered $1,000. He tried to negotiate. The scout, Brian Bridges, says, no, that's all we got. And he said, okay, when's the next flight out? He ended up getting $870 after taxes. <laughs> hey, take the chance, right? Take the opportunities. That's a fact, and it's going to be your fellow fellow former league, former major leaguer on this Aussie Drop Bears team, Rich Thompson, coming in. That's a good guy to throw out on the mound after another former affiliated man. And you want to talk about another good teammate, good bloke? This guy's the best. Spent six years in Major League Baseball between 2007 and 2012. Five plus with the Angels, finished up with the Oakland A's, and then was in spring training with the Toronto Blue Jays, thrown against the New York Yankees. And injured his back, ended up needing two back fusion surgeries. That was the end of his MLB career. Michael Debon first with two down. That one off the glove of Jaden Cavill. So 
Deeb's gonna trot up to second. It ends up being a 6-2 fielder's choice. Max Brennan firing that one home to get Malachi Mitchell. And a 2-1 count on Dan Oberst. Nanner's EH, one for two on the night. Single, a couple steals, and an RBI ground out. And it looks like another unique shift. Riley Light going from right field to left center. And there's nobody on the right side of the outfield. Except for Blake Cavill, who's played probably 10 steps into shallow right. I think this is the most unique use of the rover we've ever seen in Banana Ball. Shout out Eric Burns, he'd be proud. Some hey. crickets, to, some cricket analytics coming into play right there, boys. I like that a lot. It ends up being a six pitch walk for Dan Oberst. Michael Deeb's gonna score from second easily and the Nanners will take their third point of the night as Danny Oberst grabs his 10th walk off of the tour. Okay, Chris Oxpring, player coach, the manager of this Aussie Drop Bears team. I cannot thank you enough for spending so long up here in the booth with, uh, with us and letting your guy, Rich Thompson, take the reins down there. My pleasure, Beaks. Thanks for having me, mate. <laughs> Looks like we got a little pacer test going on. Before you do leave, do you have the pacer test in Australia? Yep, the beep test. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, beep test. We certainly do. And I can assure you that not one single bloke likes doing it. It's the worst. I loved it. I live for it. It's my it's time all, to It's all my right time for you, shine. mate. You, you're, you're light and athletic. You wait till you're big and not athletic. It's the worst. <laughs> they keep uh, doing the pacer test down below. This is Chris Oxpring. And thank you for spending, geez, about half the night with us, man. As you exit, we are about to give away a free pair of Hoka's. Not one, but two free pairs of Hoka's. Thanks to our good friends over at Zappos who love the Banana Ball World Tour here. And the co the word here, our buzzword, Biko's buzzword of the night is down under. So you have to click the link in the description of the video or in the comment section. Fill out all your contact information. And in the buzzword section, put down under. There will be two pairs of Hoka's being given away because of the rain out last night. And once again, Chris, I, I cannot thank you enough for joining us. BK, my pleasure, mate. Thanks, guys. Enjoy, fans. Good to see you. Good luck the rest of the way tonight, man. Appreciate it, mate. Thanks. Chris Oxpring, starting pitcher last night for the Drop Bears and the manager of this team, former San Diego Padre. And the pride of Ipswich, Australia. Uh oh. Look at this, getting taken over uh, by get, Split. Get, I'm getting kicked out by Split. <laughs> well, I've never heard him talk, and the microphone is in his ear, but it is good to see you up in the booth, Mr. Split. Just in time for a debut here in Banana Land, Zach Phillips. Six foot, 170 pound southpaw out of Ole Miss. 27th round draft pick in 2019 by the Kansas City Royals is the entire Bananas team still doing the pacer test as we enter the top of the seventh inning. Phillips coming off of four years in the Royals organization. Got all the way up to double A in Northwest Arkansas. And quickly ahead, a ball and two strikes here. And that is going to be a four-pitch strikeout of Riley Light, the right fielder, to begin his Bananas career. Thank you for your insight split. He's the strongest banana in the world. Gets rid of the headset. He starts spinning the wheel of unfortunate up here. Chopper up the middle, going to be a tough play. Right, Cox, bare hands over to first. Dazzling play once again by the Glove Magician. He has been on fire tonight in the field. I mean, we've seen dazzling play after dazzling play for Ryan Cox, not only in the trick play department, but just with a beautiful bare hand like that grab, throwing it on to first and retiring Zane Chavez. Slap a star next to it in your book at home. 1-1 one, one count. Now 1-2 one on Cooper Morgan, the center fielder. He fouls that one off. And how about Zach Phillips? He is working at pretty unprecedented speed right here. I mean, he's just now hitting one minute and 30 seconds on his MPI this inning. An impressive mark from Phillips, who's not only pounding the strike zone, but also mixing up his timing out there on the mound. And that one, where did it miss? 86 miles an hour. 
It looked like it was right on the bottom of the zone for Trackman. Vincent Chapman doesn't give it to the new banana Southpaw. As that 83 mile an hour looked like changeup is fouled off. And Biko, let me tell you, the guys still out there doing the pacer test and Kyle Lewigs, who invented this, uh, this run scoring celebration, he's still running out there. 3-2 count now. And this is chopped to first. Eric Jones grabs it. We'll go behind the back. Phillips covering the bag in time. One, two, three inning. Two minutes and 25 seconds. An excellent MPI in Zach Phillips' Banana Land debut. I think that will buy you another inning sometime, my dear friend. No kidding. Zach Phillips with an impressive inning. The Bananas still looking for some more guys who might join that bullpen. And that is one impressive inaugural outing for Phillips. Three-point lead for the Nanners. They just need one run to make it four points. We'll throw it down to the young professor. It is the grandpa, grandson, gritty off. Brothers, and they are going to gritty all the way home. Fellas, are we ready? All right, boys, get ready to gritty in three, two, one. Gritty up. Here we go. There's the grit. No, all the way down the line. There we go. Gritty, gritty, gritty. Holden is in the lead. He's got wheels. Holden is getting out there. His grandpa, Jim, is waiting for him. Jim is in that position. He's ready to go. Jim's got the gritty, but here comes Ed. Oh, no. Ed goes down, but he's ready to go. Oh, no. Here comes Jim. Jim is coming around, looking good, putting the glasses on, taking them off. Ladies and gentlemen, our winners, we've got Jim and Holden, winners of the Grandpa Grandson Gritty Giddy Up. Another successful Grandpa Gritty Off split. <laughs> it's good. This is a, a modeling debut for you. I mean, the, the jersey's off. You, I think this it, is actually a jersey, technically. Wait, no, 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 no. I already took my shirt off on the broadcast last night. I don't think I could do that two nights in a row, man. If the tarp comes back out, maybe I could fool around, but we're getting really wild at this point split. Rich Thompson out for a second inning of work. Split, thank you for the handshake. Incredible work as he gives Bryson Wheeler a firm slap to the old keister. It's five, six, seven for the Nanners. You're in the bottom of the seventh inning. Still more than 32 minutes on the clock. We have an excellent, excellent pace to get nine frames in tonight. Reminder that when the seventh inning ends, the Hoka giveaway closes. The magic word tonight is down under. That is D-O-W-N space U-N-D-E-R. And that's gonna get you two Hokas? It's gonna get you an opportunity to win one of two pairs of Hokas. 2-2 two -two to DMAC, broken bat, flared into center. Easy work for Cooper Morgan and one down. DMAC 0 for three. Second time Morgan has snagged a pop from him tonight. He struck out his first time. And now Jackson Olsen will swing away. Flew out to left his first time. RBI double clanging off the top of the right field wall in the fourth. That opened up. Oh, no, that didn't open up. That doubled the bananas points on the night. Not only did it do that, but it put Jackson at eight walk-offs against challengers on the tour. Far and away the most by any banana. Oh, my gosh, what a snag by Josh Lavender as Jaden Cavill bumps into him and everyone's all right. An unstoppable force meets an immovable object. And heck of a job by Lavi to hold on there. Yeah, you talk about a scary play. How about that? And Josh Lavender able to stay up even after making that catch. That's a tremendous play. That's what happens when a man out of Atlanta goes barreling full into the pride of Sydney, Australia. Hot shot to second. Trick play over to first. Not in time. Oh, man. 
Would have been a two minute and five second inning for Rich Thompson, but a trick play missed by Blake Cavill. Can't blame him though. That was one of the better ones we've seen on the tour. Coxie was just burning down the line. Yeah, it was really kind of the flip to himself, the transfer that was, a, that was able to get Ryan Cox over there at first base. So life for the Nanners. Here in the bottom of the seventh inning and that'll be the end of the night for Rich Thompson. Came in relief an inning ago. Gave up a sprint that walked off the inning. That inning ended up hanging on Tyrell Harris. And Thompson goes two thirds of a frame. Would have had a one, two, three inning if not for the attempt on the trick play there by Blake Cavill. Although it was a doozy, that was a, a really slick play. The designated hitter for the drop bears goes to the mound, Luke Livian. As you can see, a few years at Northern Oklahoma, then transferred to Central Missouri, where we have had some Banana Land products before. Zach Whalen, 2021 Breakfast Bowl Banana, 2022 World Tour Party Animal out of UCM. Best known for the Flaming Bat. Made famous by ESPN. Take a look at folks out there in the dog park. Sitting in the back of a truck. What a view of historic Grayson Stadium. Ballparks that, that has been here inside Daffin Park since 1926. That's when it was Municipal Stadium built as a football stadium. Hurricane in 1941 did some serious damage. That's when William Grayson came in and was able to fund some reconstruction, turned it into a baseball field. And boy, it hasn't changed a whole lot since then. Just a few coats of paint, new deck, little club down the third base line. Wow, Bill Leroy into the tarp and out of it. Don't see that every night. That one chopped foul. He's going for it again. This time misses it by a few feet. 2-2 two -two count on the Bananas catcher. A sprint his first time, flew out his last time, although it was amazing, an amazing running catch. Out in deep left by Paul Winland. As this one's popped in foul territory, Lavender is called off by Max Brennan, who makes the snag. And Luke Livian does his job. Strands Cox at first base, a scoreless seventh inning. And still a three-point lead for the Bananas going into the eighth. Here comes the Banana Splits. We'll be back after this. The pitch for your bananas, number 91, DJ the Invader. To the top of the eighth inning we go. Heck of a job by the splits. As D the, DJ the Invader, a man of extraterrestrial origins, we at least expect. Never gotten to see his face. Only few have heard him talk. But he showed up to the tryout back on November 19th. Touched 96 on the gun. Had a devastating changeup. And we said, all right, this seems pretty fun. And we got off to a solid start. 
a little rough in between. A couple good outings recently. Yeah, recently, DJ the Invader starting to get back on track. Started the season with some incredible minutes per inning marks. Party Animals kind of beat him around at the end of March, but DJ really finding his form again, and you can expect a quick inning here against the Drop Bears. Eight, nine, and one. Do to swing it here for our friends from the Lucky Country. Jaden Cavill, Luke Livian, and then at the top of the order, Max Brennan. Jaden one for two on the day, a single and a strikeout behind one and two. And I'll tell you, Biko, very rarely do you see a spaceman, an extraterrestrial being, grow a mustache on a world tour outside of his helmet. I actually haven't seen it ever before. It's just about as rare as it comes. Those four seam and two seam fastballs, slider, cutter, and changeup. And that is 86 on the outside corner for strike three. Now it's going to be Luke Livian. Started as the DH. Got the last out of the seventh inning on the bump. Luke brought Harrison Babbitt into the fold. Livian out of Sydney, Australia. That one to the backstop. He was able to stay in the box. So no strike call, 2-0 count. And that one once again to the backstop. Once again, Livian staying put. That's where you see DJ going to the changeup, 3-0. Just has the best control of it quite often. Does it again there. And that's the comfort pitch for DJ. That's what you're going to see him rely on in these situations. There's a liner down the line, straight foul. Two-seam fastball at 87 fouled off. Payoff pitch coming to Livian. Popped into a double play and grounded out to the pitcher tonight. Although it was a hot shot snagged by Jared Donaldson, who, by the way, was superb. Gave up two, two runs in the first. They end up being unearned, and he gets seven strikeouts. That is ball four. Livian uncertain of the call from Vincent Chapman at first. The Bananas with great sprint defense. All seven guys behind the pitcher and catcher touch it awful quickly. And Luke will have a one-base sprint. Yeah, Livian thought with Vincent's arms going up, it was an exaggerated strike three call. He was upset about it, but then turned on the Jets, got there to first base, but might have deprived himself of a two-base sprint in the end. And here's Max Brennan, who's been the leadoff hitter back-to-back -back nights for the Drop Bears. 2-0 count on their shortstop. One for three on the night, double in a run scored. Livian, excellent jump, swing and a miss. He has second base stolen easily. Yeah, DJ really not doing anything to hold on Livian there. Just an excellent jump by him. Slow tapper foul. Two and two count. Uh, Brennan as full capacity Grayson Stadium crowd. More than 4,000 here in our city by the sea. Responding to Sharks, Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy with oi, oi, oi. It's good stuff. I know we've got... About 30 fans who made the trip from the land down under. Count now full on Brennan as he checked his swing. But the rest of the fans seemed to know what was going on as well. That ball barreled. And it's past the barrel king himself, Michael Deeb. Livian will score easily from second. Brennan's thinking about three bags. And he's got himself a triple. First ribeye of the night for Max Brennan. And the Drop Bears push a run across for the first time since the first inning. Yet yeah, Jared Donaldson really found a way to shut them down. Zach Phillips with an effective inning. But here, DJ just not commanding the strike zone. Ran that count to three and two. Brennan got a pitch he liked and also got, was a little fortunate the banana shifting that outfield in with the sprint defense and he was able to drive that ball and record a triple and score yet another run here. That's a fact, Josh Lavender 
Now one for four on the night, picks up his first ribeye. Just as they did in the first inning, two runs here in the seventh for the Drop Bears. Showing signs of life. Lavi gonna go to second on the wild pitch. Blake Cavill in the box. Couple strikeouts with a hot shot to shortstop. Sandwiched in between, and that one is gonna sneak through the center of the infield. Lavender being waved around. Throw from Meadows is all the way to the backstop. And good running by Blake Cavill. It's actually not gonna be an error on the doctor as Cavill gets back to second. Cox got him with the between the legs tag. And he wants this to be challenged. And we'll see if the bananas do it. The bananas will challenge that call. Cavill was going to second right out of the box. He picks up a ribeye. Lavi scores his second run of the night. And let's see if I can't not break. No, I did break it again. I have once again broke my Riedel headset. And Josh Tulevsky will have to chat with Zach Frangelo. This one's close, Zach. This one's really close. I, yeah, we need to see it from the other side. Looks safe to me, guys. If we can't get another angle, this has to be a call stands. And we do not have another angle, so Blake's, yeah. He's gonna be safe. Call standing. Okay, I have once again ripped my Riedel headset to smithereens. But that's okay, it turns out the part that I've ripped off, it's really more cosmetic than anything. And in the fourth challenge in banana ball history by a team, for the first time, the call is not overturned. Yeah, and there's sort of big implications there for the rest of this ball game for the bananas. In the ninth inning, if they want to try and utilize a challenge, they're unable to. That that lost them their challenge. Excellent point, Josh. How about that kid breaking it down in the stands? <laughs> this ball sprayed down the left field line, and it's gonna one hop up against the wall off the red leg sign. Cavill scores. RBI double for Paul Winland. And the Drop Bears have brought out the lumber here in the seventh inning. They've scored four runs off DJ the Invader. Yeah, DJ just having a hard time as we go down to Jesse Cole. Our World Series pitcher and Red Sox Hall of Famer, 76 years young. Let's hear it for Bill, the Spaceman. Just one of those nights for DJ the Invader. Started great with the strikeout looking, but then after the Full count and ball four sprint given up to Luke Livian. Brennan with the RBI triple. Lavender with the RBI single. Same for Blake Cavill. And Winland with the RBI double that knocks out DJ. And Bill the Spaceman Lee stretching his way out to the mound. He's going to be tasked with getting the last two outs here in the top of the eighth inning. Bill Lee has been very effective out of the bananas pen. Not a guy who's going to light up the radar gun, but Bill able to get soft contact on a lot of batters, and he's got three strikeouts this season, one against arguably the party animal's best batter in Jake Skull. Originally out of Burbank, California, now in the Burlington, Vermont area. Bill Lee, 10 years with the Boston Red Sox from 1969 to 78. Four more with the Montreal Expos after that. He's a Sox Hall of Famer. Can you take a look at what he has done on the tour thus far? Still has not given up a sprint in what is turning into a, an illustrious banana's career. And a crow hop, Lee Fist, it's above the zone. Bill Leroy throws the ball into center field. And Winland's gonna take third base. 
on the Roy's 13th error on the tour. Another crow hop pitch, another leafus, and this one popped in the infield. Cox, he makes the call, goes behind the back, can't snag it. Matt Wolf not there to get the bobble. And it is only the fourth trick play missed on the tour. In 72 attempts for Ryan Cox, he was three for three on the night before that. And Ryan Cox, believe it or not, has not missed a trick play here in Grayson Stadium or against challengers on the tour. Until now. Runners on the corners, four runs already home for the Drop Bears. Less than 15 minutes on the clock, but we just need to complete the eighth inning within that time. But this is where it gets wild. If for some reason this inning drags on and on and the time runs out, every run that is scored will count. And the fifth run of the inning now scores on that ground out for Zane Chavez. He's 0 for 4, but picks up a ribeye as Winland touches home plate. And there are two away. But you're already seeing exactly how effective Bill Lee is, regardless of that trick play miss. Back-to-back -back ABs where guys have had very soft contact, that little pop-up on the infield for the first batter, and then that slow grounder over to Eric Jones at first. Bill has gone four relief appearances without allowing a run. In a row, that is. Trying to make it five. Hot shot to Matt Wolf between the legs. Beautiful trick play by the pride of Joy, Oklahoma. But a five spot for the Drop Bears in the top of the seventh. Bill Lee does his job. He threw three outs. His defense was able to record two of them. And Bill Lee continues to dazzle. That's now five straight scoreless outings. As you get another look at the five-run rally from the Aussies. As we go to the bottom of the eighth inning, we turn Grayson Stadium yellow. It is our own version of at least earlier on the tour, a seventh inning stretch. Now that the sun goes down later, an eighth inning stretch. By the way, the Drop Bears just batted around. Nine men hit. And four of them got hits. They were all in succession. Brennan, Lavender, Cavill, and Winland. This is a time where we are all yellow in Banana Land. Now let's go Bananas! The love extends to everybody watching here tonight. Wherever you are on YouTube, we really appreciate you spending your Friday evening or Saturday morning if you are in the land down under with us in Banana Land. Harrison Babbitt is going to be the new man on the mound. Now to the University of Central Missouri. Good friend of Luke Livian's as Jackson Olsen. Make sure everybody knows it's time to celebrate an at-bat from the Italian Stallion. Vinny Derubius, first pitch swinging, pops it up. Max Brennan makes the snag. And a good start to Harrison Babbitt's evening. Yeah, Vinny's going to need, need a little more gabagool after this at-bat. A few more family Sunday dinners. The man out of Trumbull, Connecticut, retired. And Dalton Malden will get his second at-bat of the night. 
the songbird of our generation, originally out of Lake City, Florida, now resides in Nashville, Tennessee, had a magical homecoming this past weekend. Got an RBI base knock in game two, and then ended up popping out to a fan in his last at bat. Was mic'd up on the broadcast, performed a handful of concerts for over 10,000 fans at First Horizon Park. It now has a 2-2 count. He's not going to try and steal first. He's swinging away. And we saw some excellent trick plays from Dalton Malden over the course of the two games up in Nashville. By the way, Biko, you touch on that RBI single from Malden in game two. That was his first RBI that he collected since March the 2nd when the Bananas played the party animals here in Grayson Stadium. And it was his fifth ribeye of the tour. This past weekend, his first four came within the first six games of the tour. Two of them on opening night in West Palm Beach, a pair of walk-off doubles. One to win an inning, one to win the opener of the tour. And he goes down swinging. 77 mile an hour offering there from Babbitt. Sidearming it in there. Throws four seam, two seam, and cut fastballs. Look at that thing die. Also adds a 12-6 curveball, but that looked like his best pitch, the splitter. Babbitt, man who grew up in Dallas, Texas, and then spent his high school career in Austin. Will now face Alex Ziegler. Pinch hitting for DR Meadows at the top of the lineup. Now eight and a half minutes left to play as the bat tricking Maestro does his job. Ziggy three for 13 on the tour. Has shown the knack to come up in the clutch. Picked up a walk-off earlier this year, his second of his Bananas career in his second tour with the Nanners. Now a 3-1 count for the man out of Butler, Pennsylvania. And the University of California, Pennsylvania, and he's plunked. Not what Harrison Babbitt meant to do. Ziegler is down for the count. And will break out a hard 90 with a backside covered in dirt. Ziegler hit by a pitch for the first time on the tour. And the Nanners have life. Although they will need the next three men to reach base before they can dream about tying the eighth inning. Malachi flashed the kid Mitchell. Pinch runs for the third time tonight. He takes over for Ziggy. Eric Jones, an RBI double in the first. Sprints in each of his last two plate appearances. Picked up a ribeye in the second as well. As Malachi grabs his second steal of the evening. And his 38th on the tour in 40 tries. Now 39 for 41 as he grabs third base. And we've seen Malachi wreck so much havoc in challenger games. Believe it or not, a guy who has served primarily as a pinch runner the entire season for the Bananas. Malachi has four walk-offs for the Bananas against challengers. This one crank foul, full count on Eric Jones. And those are all four of Malachi's walk-offs on the tour. Correct. Hasn't gotten one against the party animals. Yeah. Payoff pitch coming to EJ. And that one's inside. It's going to be a sprint. He'll pick up his third stake of the evening. Things get interesting here. The ball has now touched four of seven drop bears. Jones has his second two-base sprint of the night. Had to get to Blake Cavill and Zane, Zane Chavez to finish that up. How about Eric Jones Jr. Picks up his third sprint of the night. He's now tied for the team lead with Danny Hosley and DR Meadows with 15. Good night for the on-base percentage, which was already great coming in at 418. Michael Deeb with a barrel. But that one tracked down by a leaping Riley Light. 
And the Drop Bears win the inning. It's a 3-1 game. Here's the young professor. It can only mean one thing. It means it's time to cast our gaze to the scoreboard. At the end of the eighth inning, the Drop Bears get one on the board. It is 3-1 Bananas, which means in the ninth inning, the Bananas are three outs away from claiming victory in our first full international game. But here's the thing about Banana Ball, ladies and gentlemen. In Banana Ball, in the final inning, every run that counts for a point. That means the Drop Bears have their opportunity to mount their comeback. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready because this is the final inning! The young professor does not lie. All runs scored here in the ninth will count as points. We end up getting here with five plus innings left on the timer. And if we're tied at the end of this inning, which would mean at least two runs scored by the Drop Bears. We'll go to tiebreaker showdowns. Good point by Brian Phelps in the K-Club chat, noting that Alex Ziegler has shaved. It's good to see that man's face again. And of course, Brian using his wife Becky's account and has adopted the couple's nickname of Bricky. Just good stuff right there. <laughs> Speaking of good stuff, how about Funky Phil? Putting Tanner Thomas's body to shame. I, I like Funky Phil's moves. This is the most <laughs> electric weigh-in I've ever seen. About weigh-in, ring, ring girls. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll settle on ring dudes. And you see guys without shirts, I understand why you jump right to the weigh-in. I also understand why your brain could be fazzled by the absolutely mythical dance moves of Funky Phil. And you've got shades of Yvonne Trezak down there. <laughs> Funky Phil doing lots of push-ups. He only needs one arm. Oh my gosh. We gotta keep this guy in the country. I don't want him flying back to Australia. We'll have him on the broadcast tomorrow night. I can promise you that. Funky Phil needs to be heard by the world. By the way, this is the most pivotal part of our ball game. Talk about ready to rumble. Jaden Cavill lines that foul. He's one for three on the night, singling a couple strikeouts. And once again, a little early to the party, but another barrel. And back-to-back -back hard hit balls off the bat of Jaden Cavill. 103, the exit velocity of that first foul. How about 99 miles per hour off the second foul ball? Jaden representing Sydney, Australia in the box. Matt Malatesta pitching for Brant Beach, New Jersey on the mound. Shout out the Garden State. One at 78 misses up. Malatesta, splitter specialist. Just like the banana starter tonight, Jared Donaldson. And Harrison Babbitt, who just threw a one run eighth. Cavill still early to the party. And he cuts and misses. It looked like a rare slider for Malatesta, who primarily throws the splitter, two seam fastballs, and once in a while will mix a fork ball in. But Malatesta has shown great command, especially since the month of April. Had a hard time finding the strike zone, but now you're seeing him pound it as Dalton Malden goes with a trick play that's going to get away. It rolls past Eric Jones at first base, and that's going to get Max Brennan up to second here in the ninth. Well, things get really interesting now. It's actually our man Luke Livian on second. Max Brennan now coming up to the dish. He represents the game's tying run with only one out. That is a costly trick play miss. Dalton Malden now 18 for 20 on the tour in his attempts. As the splitter drifts below the knees. Brennan's been the best hitter for the Drop Bears. Two for four tonight. Double and a triple, an RBI, two runs scored. And he led off last night's rain canceled game with a double as well. Makes him three for six between the two games with three extra base hits.
And Funky Phil trying to pinch run here. 3-0 count. Heater at 85 right down Broadway. That one cranked through the six hole into left. A stop sign for Luke Livian. And the drop bears in business. Tying run is on first base. The go ahead run comes into the box in the form of who else but Josh Lavender. Yeah, what a moment for Josh Lavender, a party animal last season, now getting a chance to put a, to make another mark here in Banana Ball. And Funky Phil, representing the game's tying run, will pinch it for the now three for five on the night, Max Brennan. Lavender one for four, an RBI single his last time. He scored twice, and a pickoff attempt on Phil. Goes back diving in his shorts. And we'll get to the outside corner. Danny Hosley and Matt Wolf watching intently from the Bananas bullpen. Looks like Haas is warmed up and ready to come in in case things get real wild. And that's why you saw Vinny Derubius pinch hit in the eighth and take Danny Hosley's spot in the order so the Bananas could get him warmed up in case he might need to come in in the ninth. And Funky Phil steals second. He was off on the pitch. By the way, it's not just a joke he's in there. He plays in the state third grade level of Australian professional baseball. That is the fourth highest level there is. It goes ABL, then grade one, grade two, and then Phil is in grade three. He's currently hitting over 400 this year for the Bacham Hill Kookaburras. And he represents the game's tying run. Now in scoring position. And that was a smart base running decision by Funky Phil. Matt Malatesta gets a lot of ground balls. As this one goes towards a fan and will not be caught. But getting back to Malatesta, you'll see a lot of ground balls, which means he'll, he can set up quite a few double plays. And Funky Phil stealing second base there, takes the double play out of the equation, extends this inning for the drop bears. Lavender very familiar with Malatesta. They battled a handful of times on last year's tour. Matt is a collegiate banana legend. CPL champion in 2021 as Lavi lifts this one to center. Meadows there to snag it. Tagging and trying to score is Livy in the throw home. Oh, on a hop! He's out! And the ball game's over! The Bananas win 3-1! The drop bears are going to challenge the call at home plate by Vincent Chapman, with it, which is within their right. They're one for one on their challenges tonight. And let's see if the game is indeed over or if it is going to be three to two. Let's do this thing, Zach Brongelo. Jalen Johnson, what does this look like at home plate? Uh oh, he looks he's out. He's out. Yeah, that he's is out. out. The call will stand. That's an out. That's an out. And that is why the challenge was instituted for plays that could decide a game. And the Bananas will indeed win three points to one. Thrilling first full ball game between the Nanners and the Aussie Drop Bears. It came down to the wire. And now Bill Leroy will shout out himself and his teammates as they improve to six and three in challenger games and 20 and 20 with a couple ties on the tour. To the field to Bill Leroy. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what to do. Get those hands together. Coming to celebrate to the mound one last time. A bananas win. Myself, Bill Roy. Up next, our wonderful coaches, Coach Adam Byron, Coach Tyler Gillum. 
And of course, our entertainers, Malachi, Flash the Kid Mitchell, our trick pitcher, Matt Wolf, our bat trickster, Mr. Alex Ziegler, Dakota Albritton Stilts, the tallest man in sports, and our dancing first base coach, Maceo. We have our pitchers in reserve. Starting pitcher, Jared Donaldson, Kyle Louise, Christian Mr. Electric Dearman, Matt Malatesta, DJ the Invader, Connor Higgins. New guy. Holding down first base tonight. We're at number three. Yeah. Leading off the game with a double early, Mr. Eric Jones. Coming up next, you know him and love him. Savannah Bananas, heartthrob, call him maybe. Number nine, Noah Bridges. Mike Will. Hey, hey, hey. The slugger. Coming up with legend, Reginald Horton, Mr. Danny Obers. It's fun to stay at the, the man himself. Number 18, Danny Hosley. Going down. The trick shortstop with multiple tricks tonight. Number six, Mr. Ryan Cox. Call him if you need help. He is a doctor. Number five, throwing out the guy to win the game, DR Meadows. Coming up, singing his own song. Number 13, Mr. Dalton Malden. The Italian Stallion. Get those fists up for Vincent DeRubius. The man himself beating his chest, coming to the mound. Number 24, Dakota McFadden. Yes, I cry. Yes, I cry. And the groovy man, the barrel man, number seven, Michael D. Last but not least, number eight, our social media star and greatest showman, Jackson Olsen. and some pictures with the Plaza Party right out front, right out front right now. The Plaza Party is about to begin. Go meet your favorite bananas and the Aussie Drop Bears. Pictures, autographs, and more. We love you so much. We will see you back here at the ballpark tomorrow night. Right now, Plaza Party just started out front. My name is Shark. We love you. Good night. What an incredible first full game between the Savannah Bananas and the Aussie Drop Bears. That is Richard Keel right there, who actually was the man who came in there in the ninth inning. We we're just absolutely lost in a spin cycle of banana ball madness and mania split in the booth and Funky Phil on the first base dugout. Lost in the sauce, it was Richard Keel who throws the bottom of the eighth inning, gives up one run, and then hits in that D8 spot that was lost once Luke Livian took over on the mound. It's just absolute bonanza as far as roster construction, substituting, and that is my bad. But Richard Keel ends up throwing that inning, then he gets the pinch hit. Well, I guess he's actually just hitting for himself there now that he's come in to the game pitching. He hits there for Luke Livian, who he relieved for, uh, and then he gets on base, ends up being at third, and you get a little 
uh, Jeremy Giambi type situation. No slide at home plate. Barely tagged out in time. Nairs win 3-1. to one. And it's a very interesting decision not to slide there if you're Richard Keel. But man, you've got to give credit to the doctor, DR Meadows, with just an incredible throw. We've seen it so many times on tour. DR with one of the best arms in the Bananas outfield. I mean, you could interchange him or Noah Bridges out there. It is fascinating the kinds of things that DR Meadows can do, whether he's back flipping or throwing guys out at home to end a ball game. It was a perfect one, Hopper, and a good deke by Bill Leroy, which might have been part of why Richard Keel did not get dirty because Bill is standing up straight. It looks like he's going to sneak right by him. All of a sudden, one hop on the money. Tag is right there, and Keel's foot was probably an inch or two hovering above home plate when the tag was applied. That is that. So uh, a wild ride from start to finish. The drop bears came out absolutely going gangbusters. Two runs in the top of the first, and then the Bananas able to respond. They score two runs of their own, scoreless second inning. Then the Nanners take the third and the fourth one to nothing and end up up three to nothing later on in the game uh, when the Drop Bears win the eighth 5-1 and then had the tying run in scoring position before the 8-2 double play. I mean, that thing... Uh, as Jesse Cole predicted, it came down to the wire. And that's what you like to see in Banana Ball. And for the Drop Bears, it really shows their prowess here in Banana Ball. Being able to rally that late, get that critical point in the eighth inning. Again, with every run counting as a point in the ninth, if Keel had been able to score and extend that inning, the Drop Bears would have been another run away from tying this ball game, possibly sending it to showdowns. For the Bananas tomorrow, I mean, they're going to respect these Drop Bears so much more than they already do. And, and it's a very tough decision there, if you are the Drop Bears, to honestly send that runner. Because what is the situation? How different is it being down by one point with a man on second compared to being down two points with runners on second and third and two outs? Especially because you had Blake Cavill coming up, a guy who just hit 379 in his second year at JUCO, hit uh, well over basically 330 in his first year at JUCO as well. He has two years in the Australian Baseball League. He's, he was an Australian Little League World Series member. He's played in the World World Cup teams in U15 and U18, that is the guy you want up with the game on the line. But DR Meadows, the doctor, denies them that opportunity. And it's easy to be a Monday morning quarterback. It took a perfect throw and a slick tag to get him. Blake doesn't get the opportunity because of it. Look, the decision is made for the sake of competitiveness. These guys want to win. They want to lay their claim to Banana Ball. And, man, they tried their hardest tonight, that's for sure. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. We will be back in action tomorrow night, 6.30 p.m. pregame Eastern time, 7 p.m. first pitch right here on YouTube. That means 8.30 a.m. pregame time in Sydney and Canberra and 9 a.m. first pitch for all our friends over there in that part of the time zone in Australia. We really appreciate you all watching here. Good morning to you. Hope your Saturday is going great. Appreciate everybody uh, in this hemisphere for watching it. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Friday night. It was a wild one. Once again, we just cannot thank the Drop Bears enough for making uh, the over a day journey it takes to get from the land down under over here to the United States and to Savannah and connecting on this flight to this flight and there uh, and, and the hotel rooms and everything. I mean, this is a serious expenditure, a lot of time and money invested and boy, were we blessed tonight that they did it. And really what we're seeing from the Drop Bears is they're all smiles. They're so thankful and grateful to be here. And boy, this it really just changes and elevates the sport of banana ball. Could not agree more. Okay, before we shut this thing down, we have to give away two pairs of Hoka's. Two Hoka's! Two pairs of Hoka's. The first winner tonight, Sarah Stark. Congratulations so much, Sarah Stark. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you really enjoy your new pair of Hoka's. And winner number Number two, Richard Hartness. Same goes for you, Richard. We really appreciate you watching. Thank you to everybody who watched tonight. And uh, sorry for everyone who did not get your hokas. Luckily, another pair will be flying out of Banana Land tomorrow night. Yeah, and we can't wait. Again, we're going to have pairs flying out of Banana Land the rest of this year. That is a fact. And, and before we shut this thing down and see you uh, tomorrow night, 
we will have to shout out our entire cast and crew that makes this thing possible because it takes an army and it is what a, a really magical crew that does the whole thing. So starting in the control room, Griffin Ellis, our technical director, the man pressing all the right buttons at all the right time. You are a superstar, the brains behind the operation, the best in the biz. Our director, Chris Haynes, talk about a beautiful mind, always calling all the right shots, getting us some really unique ones this evening. Of course, the camera crew, a big part of that. We'll get to them in a second. On audio, Katie Duke. Talk about nailing it on the ones and the twos. Great work, Katie. On replay, Jalen Johnson. Couple of challenges tonight. We got the best angles possible. Thanks to you, Jalen. And just throughout the entire evening, you are superb. Can't wait to see all of your highlights of the night at the end here. And Julia Massey on graphics. Kwanzi, one name. That is all you get because that is all you need. What a dynamic duo on the graphics and the score bug on Kwanzi's side. And down when it comes to our cameras, the Iron Horse of BTV. You know her, you love her. Emerson Elm and you saw her sliding on the tarp with us on the pregame show. Well, that was from last night, but you saw it on the pregame show. I digress. Emerson's the best across the diamond. Taylor Finneran, so happy to have you around again, Taylor. That is a legend of BTV. He's great on the third base cam. Clayton Franklin, the high home extraordinaire, one of the best mustaches you will see. Rivals Mr. Josh Chalevsky right here. Probably the two best in BTV. I'm going to lay it out on the line right there. Uh, Jackson Hamilton on our low home. Always great to have Jackson around. He is superb on the center field cam. Caleb Dausch. That is what I'm talking about, Caleb. Thank you for climbing the scaffolding and absolutely nailing it out there beyond the historic race and stadium scoreboard. On our wireless cam, Jacob Noderman. Jacob, what an excellent addition to the team all over the place tonight. He was terrific. Our utility, Ham Henry Campbell. Henry, ah, oh, talk about beautiful locks and a great guy to have around. So happy to have him. And congratulations on graduating, Henry, from SCAD. That is what I'm talking about right there. Kudos to you. Our moderators in the chat, Scott Thompson and Colbite could not do it without you. You guys are absolute legends. Speaking of legends, our video legend, Chris Sachi, who sauced together that little highlight of us goofing around and absolutely eating some dirt there on the tarp. You are the best. Our YouTube king, Zacharias, bro. Thank you so much. We have a fun opening to the Ripe Rundown, which will be coming out on Sunday. We'll show a little highlight of that tomorrow night. Don't want to put the horse in front of the carriage. Actually, that's exactly what you want to do. You don't want to put the carriage in front of the horse. Just a little knowledge for you out there. But Zach, bro, integral in all kinds of stuff. Our K-Club queen, Melly B and Zappos and Hoka giveaway extraordinaire, Melisent Bean Supreme. Thank you, Melly B. And down on the sideline, Caitlin Scott. So great to have you back on the broadcast as well. Our executive producers, Jared Orton, Jesse Cole, Emily Cole, Carrie Cole. We could not do it without your amazing advice, expertise, and all that you bring to the table. So thank you so much. Mr. Josh Chalevsky, you're a superstar, as per usual. You were on one tonight. Good job, my dear man. Nico, I must say, you're a pro broadcaster and a good cobber, mate. <laughs> I love it. A good cobber. Okay, let's see what's happening with those Aussies after the ball game. I think we might have some fun with those cats. And thank you so much to Chris Oxpring for coming up on the broadcast. Same things goes for Kyle Lewigs and to the Aussie Drop Bears for making the trip here and blessing us with Wheat Bix last night, Vegemite tonight. Tomorrow we're eating Tim Tams. You better believe it. For Chad Reese, the coordinating producer and the straw that stirs the drink of BTV, the most beautiful brain of them all, and gorgeous locks that rival Henry's. I am Biko Scala saying so long for now. Once again, tomorrow night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern, pregame, 7 p.m. Eastern, first pitch. That is 8.30 a.m. Australian time, 9 a.m. first pitch for game two between the Bananas and the Aussie Drop Bears. It's going to be a blast. We'll see you then, and of course, we'll, we'll see you later!